All right, welcome to the OSR's podcast. I am Mint Mad Cow. What's going on, boys? Rex as always. And hello, it's Rice Cup again. And today we have Josh, who was Kelly blocked for six years <laughs> and broke <laughs> out of jail here. Welcome, brother. He's getting back into PKing, PVM, big time RuneScaper. How you doing, man? Through and through, man. Good to be back. Good to see you guys. Minty, Rexy, and Rice. Pleasure to be back. Yo, uh, this, for... Disclaimer, though, he broke out legally. Legally. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was my TV wore off eventually, and I was able to safely teleport out of uh, federal prison. Nice save. Uh, the TLDR there is pretty much, um, in case anybody didn't see the first one, I've been on here before a little over a year ago. It's the one-year reunion of the boys here. Um, I was drunk on RuneScape in 2012. I was 19. I said some violent things because I was trolling, and uh, it was kind of relevant to the argument that started. I got in a bad RuneScape argument. The feds didn't take too kindly to it, and um, I paid the ultimate price. And uh, the feds showed up four days later. They hit me with the old TB and Tangle combo. Spent six years in the feds, smited for my plus one. But I got out, and now I'm happily married. I turned 30 yesterday, level 30 unlocked. Ooh, happy birthday. Um, happy birthday. Thank you, man. Hey, let's go. New combat bracket, you know, is what I keep saying about it. I'm happy. <laughs> and um, about two weeks ago, also, I gave birth to, well, I mean, I didn't give birth, but we had a baby girl. My wife gave birth wow, to our second baby girl. So many, so many congratulations, oh, man. Jeez. Thank you, man. What's yeah, her name? Been, uh, What's her name? It's been a whirlwind. This one's Lydia. My older Lydia. daughter is Lennon, and this one's Lydia, which is uh, my favorite mode in music. So, oh. um, it was very, I've always thought it was a really pretty name, and it's a pretty scale. So, Lydia is her name. She's the part two, and now I'm retiring from the baby make. Um, <laughs> that's enough. We're, we're happy with two. Getting and, uh, that snip, that, snip, brother. Yeah. Yeah. About oh. A little over a month. Yeah. Let me get the old snip, man. Which there you go. probably sounds crazy honestly, for a RuneScaper, you I know. Respect but, it. I respect yeah, I'm done. Man, honestly, so respectful. We're, we're retiring from the baby having, and it's easier and faster than you know her mm -hmm. getting their tube side or anything. So yeah. we'll get that done. Um, been RuneScape vasectomized by uh, running around in the wilderness and get, dying a lot <laughs> unless it's a bot. Um, late recently got back into PvP. I don't know how many of you guys. I'm assuming most of you guys that listen to this watch all three of these dudes' content, but I also do, and I was inspired to make a one defense Pierce since the last time you saw me. And uh, so now I'm a PKing Iron Man. Not at the same time. My Iron Man's separate, of course. But um, I've really been having fun uh, learning how to PK and doing little four-way switches on my one defense gear. I'm currently in the process of maxing my Iron Man also. I'm hoping to do that by April Fool's Day. So people think I'm kidding, but I'm actually not. <laughs> um, and I also hope to start a UIM soon. Uh, basically be transferring back and forth between what I'm AFKing on because I don't really mind playing two accounts at once. Three's too much, though. Dude, you do everything oh, yeah. on RuneScape right now, bro. Absolutely everything. Bro, what a versatile Josh, yeah. player. Josh is one of the most sure. interesting RuneScape players, you know? Like, should we, the, I get should asked we do a sellout goal real quick, dude, for Josh's birthday, bro? First year yeah. anniversary yeah, back. Show him that you guys back care. On. Josh, pick a number. It has to happen. It's your birthday. You just have a brand new kid on the way. What number should we hit on this podcast? I recommend 500 to 1,000, somewhere between. I recommend it. Mm. Man, 500 to 1,000, let's do uh, I'm trying to pick somehow to incorporate 69 and 73, but I really can't with <laughs> with that bracket there. Um, well, how about let's just do 693, 693 likes, all right? Let's hit it. Okay. Like let's 69, it, yes. but tripled, you know, it's kind of a reference to 73. 693 likes, and we will. <laughs> Josh will be happy. We'll we'll do another, I guess, in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, well, it's already locked. This is birthday. We're just celebrating. We're just celebrating. Make, We're just his return, make his return glorious, you know, guys. Get him up. I'll have Thank Josh all. back on. Um, now, Josh, do you know anyone else who has ever been to prison for any RuneScape-related activities, like, ever? Um, Not me personally. I do remember um, a Crumb video about a guy that hacked a ton of accounts, wasn't it? And I, I don't think the ultimate crime that he went away for was RuneScape, though, if I'm not mistaken. But it, like, started with RuneScape. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, no. Um, not for anything similar to this. There was a perverted old man. I don't know if you guys know about that. That's a RuneScape prison story. Yeah, that, that you know. I think they came like, from Minecraft. Or... Yeah. Ooh, that'd be a good topic. All the, like, scandalous people that have, like, you know, made their way to the RuneScape community for, for a little bit, you know, before they got outed or something. There's, well, well, one of the dudes is doing a life sentence in prison now that I'm talking about. If I'm not mistaken, oh, actually, really? that was a Moatblox video, so I need to brush up on that. It was the top five people arrested for RuneScape-related incidents, and <clears> um, or maybe it was even top ten. And I remember the first time I was, like, number four or something when that video came out, and I was actively in prison. Did I tell you guys this? And I'm sitting here going, <laughs> "No, all these other yeah. dudes, how the fuck am I not number one, man? All these <laughs> other guys are like, got were you like, you know, a ticket. I made a Moatblox video worth. Was <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then, you know, he ended up becoming yeah. a good friend of mine, but... Oh, it, yeah. it, 
I'm not going to lie. The one that blew my mind, I don't know if I said this last time on here or not, was Silent Core, though, man. That's that's was really just the absolute mind blower. When I got to federal prison and my mom was like, your brother said some RuneScape guy that you like a lot made a video about you. Yeah, he has a zero I, I in his name. He was the original news guy. Zero you know? in his name. He was like the original <laughs> news guy, honestly, before he got like- I was watching his video. videos before I got locked up. Yeah, he, he really was. And also the skilling, <laughs> I, you know, he made me want to skill. He had those skilling videos, you know, where he was like, I have personally made over 300 million Golden coins on RuneScape, like with his <laughs> tiny high pitched voice back when he was a kid. And I watched the shit out of him with the thump and techno. Yeah. I was a big yeah. Icy Dan One fan, man. So, he, you know, and then becoming his friend too. Uh, it's It's been really trippy. People always ask me that too, like, oh man, it must be crazy to have gotten out and met Charlie. And I always have to tell them that I didn't know who Charlie was before I got locked up. I'm like, hey, Silent Core and like Ray William Johnson and stuff, you know, like RuneScape YouTube era there, but everybody else, I'm kind of fine. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh my God. Silent what a was throwback nice name, dude. I met him a bit. Bro, well, I was actually I was thinking about this earlier. So you say you say Charlie. Uh, so I imagine pretty much everybody watching this video knows who Charlie yeah, is. Yeah, so voice cool. critical, right? You talking about him? Voice critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking about this earlier. I was like, I was like, I wonder if Josh is like friends with Charlie or if it's like purely a business thing. Because like you've been on the podcast a good couple times now, right? Like, yeah, three or four times now. Yeah. So yeah, how, I consider him a friend, you, man. Returning how did viewer. you get? How did you get to know him? Like, how did that all happen? Um, originally Kyle Orson from the official podcast commented on my first YouTube video. My name is Josh Blald. I'm finally free or whatever it was that, uh, was my follow up to silent cores. Um, some people say interview, phone call, whatever you want to call it. You know, when I first got out of prison, silent core called me on Skype because he was such a nice guy. He didn't want to tell me, bro, nobody fucks with Skype anymore. I was like, yeah, man, I'm getting Skype on my phone right now. It's my first touch screen. <laughs> and I was like, I'm trying to remember my Skype login from six years ago. And he actually did it, dude. He, we had that whole phone call on Skype, but, um. It oh kind of popped off, you know, and um, so my first video, I had all kinds. I had probably, I wouldn't be surprised if one of you guys had commented on it. Mudkip commented on it, and uh, Mod Ronin at the time, I think he was, maybe he was already an ex-mod, but so many people. And um, Count Dankula asked if I'd come on his sh his channel at that. You know, it was mostly just straight up from YouTube comments. And then um, a friend of mine, Jerry, has pretty much had to teach me how to use Discord, because I'm sitting here telling people, like, hit me up on Skype, you know what I'm saying? Add me over here. Or, or, <laughs> Or do we text or what? And they're like, bro, nobody does this anymore. There's no Ventrilo. There's none of that. We're going to have to use Discord. And um, so, yeah, Kaya got me in touch. Kaya finagled it, got me in touch with Jackson from the official podcast. And then I just went on a couple of times. And Charlie and I gamed together a couple of times. We played Halo some. Um, shortly after I met him, he entered a different magnitude. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was at one place that was already popping when I met him. But then... You guys get what I'm saying? He went to yeah. the stratosphere like a little bit after that. Oh, so yeah, it's yeah. like, it's all love and all that, but it, the dude's busy, you know, and I get it. I'm not, yeah, yeah. I'm not complaining. I know I can hit him up if I need him. I'm still sub to him and all that, but I, I'm really hesitant to hit up big content creators to try to pursue or bigger than me, which is like everybody content creators to, for friendships, because I'm so paranoid that they're going to think I'm trying to get clout from them or something like that. I don't Let's know how to put it. It's like I overcompensate. Yeah. I, know? I, know. Be a big I, thing. I, I yeah. think it's, I think it's always like, it's always best to try and do it in a natural way. Right, right yeah. I, I know exactly what you mean. I've always felt the same. It's like, um, whenever I started getting invited to, like, events and stuff, and, like, Boaty was there, and, like, you know, we're talking, like, one of the goats of RuneScape. Absolutely. I, I, I never wanted to, like, force anything at all. It was just, like, I'm just going to be myself, and it's, like, if we vibe, we vibe, and, like, that's that's all there is to it. Exactly. You know? I, I totally get that. And I, I know that there's a lot of cases where it's, like, as a content creator it's like you know there are people that will message you and i'm sure we've all experienced this where it's like somebody just wants something from you and it's yep. not it's, it's you know or... you, do you guys want to go around and tell a story because i got one bro go for it go for it take off dude um so yeah this guy hit me up he's like please fight me please fight me i want to make a video of you fighting me it's going to be great i love your videos we pk all the time i go go fight west ham he'll, he'll slap you up he loves fights he's streaming right now he goes no 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 i want to fight you so he links his channel. I check his channel out. It's literally him in the door arena getting dumpstered by every PvP content creator known to man, bro. And he doesn't put up a lick of a fight. No switches, no nothing. He's screaming, we're fighting Sea Engineer or some shit. I'm like, bro, I'm not joining this shit, bro. He's just getting dumpstered, dude, the whole time. Clout seeking is all he's doing, huh? Uh... You no, know, like, but it wasn't even clout. Like, the views were bad. The video was bad. <laughs> Everything was bad. It was. He was trying. I don't know what he was trying, bro. That's what I'm still trying to figure fanboying. out. The fanboying was real. That's that what was, it was. Yeah, that was it. 
Honestly. I'm working on something with uh, RuneScape Chronicles right now, doing some stuff with Kemp Q, and um, I'm hey. watching through a couple of old episodes, and man, I just saw that that clip of the guy shouting out his Twitch at the Revenant Maledictus, and he said, no, 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 hold on. Twitch.tv met Mad Cow. And then you killed him, and he said, yeah. Yeah, met Mad Cow. <laughs> <laughs> That was so funny. He said, he like killed oh. me. He said, all right, Mint Mad Cow. Like it was so final. And he was, this dude's channel on his Twitch and got shit on. At the end of that clip, bro, um, thank God he cut it out. But I said, Big Bank eats Little Bank in a really cringy manner, dude. I'm so glad he <laughs> cut that shit, bro. Thank you, Kent, for looking at. Oh, all right, man. well, guess who's writing the new script, buddy? Hey, oh, no. Guess oh, who's got shit. the original clip? No, oh, I listen. cannot wait for that video, dude. Oh, honestly. I have, a, I have a question uh, to go back to the RuneScape Chronicles things because, uh, I just recorded like my first audio for it like yesterday. Oh, right? you're doing one too? You're gonna be perfect I, for it. I've right? done one. He's done one before. Right. Like this is this is the thing, right? So like, I I've never had to work with anybody in terms of commentating, and the way that Kemp has it set up is like you do one take, so you do one recording. Like it doesn't matter if it takes you like half an hour to do, but you just one recording, one file, send it because obviously the guy can just go through it and he can like edit and stuff and yep. cut what he needs to. Now, dude, I usually, like, it doesn't phase me because I edit everything myself, but, like, I am a fucking mess when it comes to doing commentary because I, like, fuck up what I'm saying <laughs> so much, and I do, like, literally, like, tens of retakes. The amount of times I'm just there, I'm just like, yo, John, who's the editor, I'm like, I'm so sorry, dude, and I'm like, yeah. like, clearing my throat. <laughs> I told him sorry multiple times. <laughs> yeah, and like it was just like I did it, and I'm just like, holy shit, I feel awful because the whole time I'm just like spluttering. I I sometimes like sometimes I really struggle with my accent to be able to pronounce certain words, so I have to like do weird shit with my mouth in order to look at the word and pronounce it. Or I'll be like, like doing shit like that. I hope they try and open my throat up. I hope they keep it in, bro. I literally at the end of it, I was just like, man, I'm so fucking sorry. I was like, I hope this wasn't absolutely AIDS to like edit. But I hope they take those sound clips and put them behind actual PvP like content clips. I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if they're listening to it. Like, bro, does Rakesy have like fucking Tourette's or something? Like, what is wrong with this guy? Like, cause it's bad, bro. It's like bad. We should um have Kemp Q on one day to talk about that community yeah, channel. Yeah, sure. Oh, hell yeah. Cause... Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I had very I had a like because he was at Alfie's wedding too. So like you know he was talking a bit about the the chronicle stuff. You know like he's got like four other people. Like well, I think it's the whole team's like four right now that he that mm -hmm. that's working for it. Like he got Ronan in there. At some point, yeah, yeah. Recently, he's yeah. a good editor. Yeah, too. yeah so yeah, it. so they, you know, they got like a pretty crazy team of editors and people like that knows a lot about the game, like what's happening and like, yeah, things like that. So it's it's, it's interesting. Great to get the, it's interesting. The bad yeah. side of that, you know. The thing is, like, he, he's he's done such a good job of it because, like, I think one of the biggest things with the RuneScape Chronicles is the level of quality is just out fucking standing, and, and like, there isn't much. There isn't, and this isn't to like say anything negative of anyone else, but like this is a, a team that are working on the production value here. And it's like to be able to release a video like every day or every other day to the same standard every single time is just like, damn, bro. Like he, he's done a phenomenal job of it. And I, I, I think that it raises all of the other content creators around as well because it's like, holy shit, like it's like this is kind of what we got to compete against now. It's like, so we need to up our shit or otherwise we're going to be left in the dust. No, for he's sure, like, if we compare it to Minecraft or Fortnite or Overwatch, right, every one of those games has a community, and those communities build out these really cool series like Oxcast and shit. Right now, we have them building out one of the best RuneScape series that showcases all the content, all the content creators, and it really makes that community solid, solidified, right? It makes us real. I feel like it's going to push us 2023 into something more than we are now right it feels like we're just kind of making content uploading growing our own community like having everyone grow together like that is i don't know i'm excited to see where this goes in like a couple months honestly just looking at other communities i'm like dude they're doing the same thing but we're doing it better now what's gonna happen like racy said too he has it super streamlined for like the the content creators to just drop right in record their voice and get out you know it's they like he said they don't care i'm not gonna lie to you 
I chopped mine to death. I edited so bad. Like if I if I flubbed it, I was like, oh no, nah, Control X or Control Z, whatever it is, you know. And I yeah, I redid it a couple times. I left in like maybe five or ten mistakes or so. Yeah, no, I, no, I, easy, rec- man. I like, recommend the like Audacity, you know, for for that kind of stuff for sure. Yep, that's what I used. <laughs> yeah. So Josh, did, did you get any like because you've done one already? I'm assuming you're doing like some more of them. Um. Also, I did watch the one that you did. It was really, really well done. Like really well, thank well you, man. I helped with the script I, on it. I just kind of threw some ad libs in. <laughs> Oh, that's mm. brilliant. Yeah, I, I kind of like, oh, dude, I changed some of it when I was reading the script because you're you're given a script and mm. it's obvious that like it's, it's it, it. When I read it, I hear Kemp's voice, and <laughs> yeah. some of it I was just His like, style. I need, I don't speak like this. Like, I need to change this shit up. I was like, that needs to move here for it to make sense to me. But, um, did you do one take as well, or did you did you send like multiple audio files? So I just sent one big file. Um. It, it only had a few mistakes in it, basically. I would pretty much record three or four lines of it, stop recording. Uh, I was kind of kind of anal about it almost. If I started a few times, I'd just go ahead and reset it. So I didn't do it like a 30-minute. Mine was a total of, I think, 12 minutes uh, because uh, I kind of okay. edited out the mistakes. It would have been probably 35, 40 if I would have just recorded it out flat right, you know. But no, I was I was pretty particular about like, okay, I flubbed that bad. I'm not going to make him do that. I'm going <laughs> to press control Z, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the I, uh, audacity. I didn't, I didn't, stuff. I didn't do that. <laughs> Wait, you sent you sent multiple it files. Said, I no, want no, them to send me the raw bad. file of whatever race he said. I want to listen yeah, no, to it. You, you don't want to listen to it, bro. You don't want to listen to it. I want to re-upload <laughs> this shit on my own channel. Oh no. <laughs> No, so, no, yeah, but like, um, I recommend Audacity because you can record audio and and cut out parts at while the 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 recording is still going on. So like you can just have it as one whole th- whole file by the end. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times be overlaid and then you just compress it down. It's all one good file and yeah, ready it's to go. nice. That actually yeah. makes that stuff a lot easier because then you don't have to send multiple files. You can just delete as you record. So you know, I, I found it a really um a really fun experience, but it was uh I, I think because it's the first time like sharing how I produce my audio, it was quite a personal thing. Like, I feel a little yeah, vulnerable when I, it. when I, what, dude, when I finished and I sent the clip, I was like, bro, I hope they don't do me dirty, man. Like, if <laughs> just like, just like, there's too many mistakes here. I'm really showing my hand. It's like I, I literally thought that afterwards. I was like, it's okay. I trust, I trust them. They're not gonna make dude, me look bad. Here you go. You know, they reminds me of, dude. If you guys watch any Mika videos, I don't, I don't know if he makes a ton anymore, but in, in some of those videos, player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is cool. Um. But he'll commentate and he'll fuck up and he'll just restart it and he'll not cut that shit. So he'll fuck something up five times in a row, start laughing at it, just lose complete pace of what he said and just it's gone and he just Rock uploads it. it. Yeah, he's like, embrace it, fuck it. And like it's great, it. bro. I can't do that, but his little little accent, bro, makes it so delightful to listen to him just fucking up. I think Racy's the same way too. I love to hear that man oh, just mispronouncing right, words. If I honestly think that if you my my un like unedited files of audio you i promise be, i'd be dying bro, bro I, think <laughs> I think your skin would be like crawling off of you it'd be so just unbearable do you know what do you guys crazy. ever do you guys ever mispronounce runescape shit like differently in one same sentence and have to re-record or fuck it up like i'll say oh, zamorak man. and zamorak or some shit like i don't know I'll have so many inconsistencies in one bro. sentence because it's a runescape word honestly i i i'm okay with messing up uh like runescape names because on like videos people be like actually it's like pronounced this way and then there's like 20 comments of that and you're like you the comment hell yeah engagement bro that's how i learn oh. when i mispronounce words like <laughs> obi is obi but i don't give a fuck i just call it obi because it sounds more fun it sounds like a dog's name obi i just i just hey, heart hey, every hey. yeah i heart every hey, comment hey. that tells me this is how you pronounce it you know like thanks. like thank you for the algorithm <laughs> yeah. Boot, boost right there appreciate it i call that the i'm just like yo, I'm not even years cha- ago yeah i'm not even changing you know what, it you know do you want to know something really messed up right by the way, because speaking of comments that we get a lot, I get comments every single video. YouTube rolled out something called YouTube handles. So like we all have our own like YouTube handle now. A little tag. Yeah. yeah. Bro, it's caused chaos on my channel. Because because here's the deal. My YouTube channel isn't actually youtube.com forward slash rakesy. I saw a <laughs> video about this, yeah. Yeah, so I made my my YouTube in like 2007 and I was straight up 30 something stupid right? ass kid. I, I i was supposed to spell my name evil rakesy 
but I didn't know how to spell evil, and I put E V E L. Okay, so my my actual yeah. YouTube it's Evil Evil Rakesy. Okay. How <laughs> did you spell Rakesy right? If you um, didn't you, spell you evil, never I can't even spell Rakesy, bro. Use my nickname, but I spelled it four times thing. wrong, bro. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so since they since they rolled out the handles, it's fucked my channel. If you go to my you YouTube channel, you can change it. You can change it. No, 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 dude, dude, dude. If you go to my YouTube channel and you click like the Rakesy, like underneath the video where you go to my channel, it takes you to some fucking <laughs> YouTube page, mm -hmm. dude, called Lewis that kicks a football into the goal. Yeah. It was a tweet. You know I think it was a tweet you did, not a video. It was a tweet, wasn't it? I saw your tweet yeah. about it. You know how many subs you just got that man right now? Just mention oh, that shit. The, 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 the best thing that's ever happened to him. He's monetized, yeah. bro. It, it, it Here is we go. Like, he, he hasn't uploaded in like 14 years. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, he's no. going to tomorrow. Dude, he's he's aspiring. The G Fuel code. <laughs> you need to find him. DM him and say, can I ro re uh, record a trailer video for your YouTube? So when people Collab. go over there, you're like, hey, wrong YouTube, dumbass. Come back over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait. So you never changed your YouTube name. I did that before because because uh, it wasn't always Rice Cope. So I just changed it to Rice Cope. No, wait, wait. What was it? What was well, it? So, so it used to be just taken. Asian Rice Cope, right? Asian so, Rice Cope. Yeah, wait, what it happened? Too, it why is it? Why did you change? change? It was too long. Too long. You know? It could be and ARC. ARSU? Yeah, no, no, our, no, Rice Cup's fine. I just didn't like Asian Rice Cup. It's too long, you know? I was like, damn, that's like, <sighs> you're going to run out of breath saying that shit, you know? But the the, yeah. the thing is, though, is it. that that guy had the name Rakesy. I couldn't get it, like, oh, 14 years damn, ago. Still? Yeah, yeah, so so he had it. I couldn't make the name Rakesy, like, it was taken. So I just said, oh, screw it, I'll just do. What it was, was I made my YouTube around the time of, like, Kids Range and Elf Mage. Right. Everyone was like edgy and shit, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna be known as Evil Rakesy. But being an absolute fucking potato, I spell evil wrong. Why, why didn't you ask your like, parents? <laughs> be like, hey, how do you spell evil? You know? Or something. They thought he had it, bro. <laughs> I thought he had it, bro. <laughs> I he was confident. He was confident. Well, I didn't. I also didn't think like, I could oval. make these YouTube Mate, you're videos a dumb kid. as a you living. Like, Fifteen years later, bro. Mate, if I asked, if I asked my dad, he'd probably be like, yeah, that looks good enough. My name's Mint Man Cow, bro. If I knew this shit was gonna be a job, <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm just saying, okay. Bro, what would you name that? yourself? What would you have named yourself? Then? Why did you name yourself that? My, do you know what? My girlfriend asked that the other day. She was like, she was like, why, why is he called Mint Mad Cow? And I was like, I've got no. <laughs> no. I don't know, man. I was, yeah, I was I, like, his name's Calson. I don't know, you know. Yeah, I got yeah, you. I got yourself you, Calson, dude. That was the lore, man. That would've been sick. When I, when I was younger, dude, I was at my friend's house. My friend would always get me into video games, dude. Guns to Duel. Uh, League of Legends in beta, you know, I was playing the 3v3s, dude, and he's like, you gotta play this RuneScape game, bro. And you know, obviously, when you make a character, you gotta spend at least two months finding a name. Well, we didn't spend that long, but at least a couple hours at his house. I'm like, dude, I, w I wanted to start with something, right? I was playing this game called Tales of Fantasia on the Game Boy Advance. It was the only game that wasn't Pokemon. And I love this witch named Mint, because she just dumpstered everybody. Just big old bombs. I could barely remember something. Like, I want to start with Mint and at the time, Mad Cow Disease was like the Ebola of my time. I figured time. it had some wow. Mad Cow Disease. Yeah. So we go, Mint Mad Cow, and that's the worst name ever. But it is better than if I were born a little earlier, it would have been Mint Ebola. So I'm just saying, <laughs> we skipped or one if you were born later, it would be Mint Corona. Yeah. <laughs> that was like a really nasty <laughs> man. Yeah. Dude, that, that should be like your pure name. You should name your pures like Mint Bro, the different Mint diseases. Is like, I... Yeah. If I could rebrand your name, I would call you Calson, you know? Right. You know, it's... Ebola son. Well, <laughs> I, I'm glad you like that name. Mad but, uh, I actually <laughs> I got the name Minty. I got Minty on oh, Twitch. Yeah. 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 Ooh. But I reverted it, because no one ever was like, they didn't oh, click on my shit. They didn't know who the fuck I was. And I'm like, dude, I've already locked in Mint Mad Cow. There's obviously a better name here. I'm fucked. And I just go back to Mint Mad Cow. They're like, you can't do this anymore. You can't change your name. I'm like... For what it's worth, though, I mean, it's like a, I recognize it as an acronym now. If I see somebody type MMC, I automatically assume they're talking about Mint Mad Cow. Dude, Anytime I, I see that. somebody say like MMC Wilderness or MMC PK or anything like that, I just assume they're talking about you. Yeah, Thank which you, is bro. pretty awesome. To, to be fair, bro, you're it's not the name anymore. That's like the deal right. breaker. You know, it's like just what you do. You know, right? What Think the, about the name Skill name. Specs. I mean, like, does that really, I mean, like, what has he got, skilled specs? I mean, come on, we all know not really, you know what I'm saying? But the name, <laughs> like it is, in and of itself, is yeah. bigger than, you know, he yeah. himself, it's a, it's a, it's a brand, you know? Yeah, yeah, you just... I tried really hard to come up with something, and I just really failed. I wanted something that was, like, kind of 
insinuating, you know, towards the history, not quite as blatant as the RuneScape felon, which was supposed to be tongue in cheek at first. I was, I was like laughing at the government when I called myself the RuneScape felon. People think I'm bragging about it. They really misinterpret the sarcastic nature of the name, the RuneScape felon. I'm making a joke at the government here. Like, I'm a felon because of RuneScape. Not <laughs> saying, oh, I'm so tough, I'm a felon, people seem to think. But, uh, man, I was thinking of all kinds of shit. I was trying to come up with court terms, man. I was thinking of, like, different legal motions that exist, man. I was like, habeas corpus or something like, try, maybe corpus. Like, I, could, I was trying to come up with anything. Dude, um, let's ask the community, motion. what is a good jaily RuneScapey name Josh could go under for the rest of his life? Give us some ideas down below. I'm sure they yo, can come up with some real yo, something. Josh you know? is Pelotus. <laughs> like if, I, I liked reformity. I like the reformity because it's like you're reformed, but also a deformity, but it's taken on Twitch. So like something in that vein, you know, mm, something yeah. that kind of kind of dips its toe in the legal issue, you but see not quite right as there? in your face. That's deep thought right there. That's deep. Trying. You see that? He's like, fucking. What well, you, you gotta, you gotta, Tom? you gotta. I gotta stroke my beard, you know. And that brain on us. Hmm. What do you got in there, dude? I don't, know. I, I don't I, know. I just, I don't know. It's hard, isn't it? Do you know? Do you know? It's funny because um, like I, I am subscribed to like a few like youtube channels that are specifically about dudes that have gone to prison uh, and then they've made like youtube channels afterwards and it's really interesting to watch their content and like how they progress as a content yeah. creator and I, I like this is a question for you i guess josh is like as time progresses with some of them i've noticed that they kind of they try to like detach from the whole prison thing and just like be like okay it's not the only thing that you know is about me it's like there's other things that i would like to kind of embark on um, sure. is that something that like you consider like is it something that you ever think about like long term or is it just like i mean you've got a very unique case here so it, it makes Definitely. sense you know but is that something you ever think about dude yeah very much so uh, i'm currently on a sort of an unofficial hiatus from youtube for about another two months or so at least for my main youtube i'll be making runescape content more soon but um yeah, man. Um, a, a great example of that, in my opinion, is Christina Randall. I don't know how many people watch her, but she went to prison for some actual stuff. You know, she got an assault or something, got her life together and um, kind of segmented it. And this is kind of the direction that I want to go, not based off of her, but something that's bigger about my case than what happened to me. And then I used to not say things like this, and it's kind of crazy, is kind of the corruption of the government in general. My case really isn't as insane as people might think. And so my future direction, although I still want to continue my series Tales from the Jungle, where I talk about the crazy shit that happened in prison, I don't want all of my content to be about prison, prison life, and me having been in prison, you know, and I'm taking this, this look at this right now is really just recently I'm thinking about it. And I think that moving forward, I'm going to do more things similar to, I recently did a video about a guy I was locked up with named Clarence Heatley. He's a very famous murderer and a drug dealer. And I made kind of an almost semi-documentary style video about him, you know, and while that is relevant to me because I knew him personally, now it's kind of could be my fulcrum or my turning point, you know, sort of into, um, I was thinking about maybe Terrence Yakey from the Oklahoma City bombing. Some really shady shit happened with the government. I'm not into conspiracy theories, never have been. But thanks to my life circumstances, I now know that the government kind of does some shady shit in, you know, legal crunches. And uh, that's kind of an avenue that I want to explore more in the future, man, is more true crime stories where the true crime isn't quite as true as it might seem. You know I'll what I'm saying? i biggest yeah. viewer, dude. I, dude, uh, I will I say you ever watch Windigoon? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Windigoon's a friend of mine now, and he uh, he's a big inspiration for that. He he does stuff like that about conspiracies and stuff. And and I tell you, I used to really really hate conspiracy theories, man. I just thought that all those people were just completely mentally ill, you know. And I still think a lot of them are. Don't get me wrong now, but but this Oklahoma City bombing thing in particular, I saw something about it. and I need to make a video about it. It looks like the government straight up logged this guy out of Minecraft. And <laughs> it's you know those like uh, was it the deep I'm playing the transitions. Holes? You know what I mean? Like yeah, once you go it. down a rabbit hole and you start opening up your mind, you start realizing that, yeah, maybe a lot of these conspiracies have, a, you know, just a, a seed of truth or yeah. maybe some are completely truthful and some are false. Right. They say that uh, misinformation is a big thing nowadays, especially from the government. You know, if, if something is not wanting to be found, what they'll do is they'll make a bunch of other shit that seems unbelievable and scattered around the truth. Classic Therefore, propaganda. Gonna, Confuse people. Exactly. So no, I am, I'm very big yeah. into what you're saying. I enjoy that you're going to go down this path. And I feel like that is honestly the only thing we can do to fight what is happening, right? Just like, you just got to make it known. Once people know about it, believe it, they understand that it's not, uh, it's a reality, then maybe, uh, maybe something will happen. Hopefully, right? Yeah. Yo, I mean, yeah, I, I, don't mind, I don't mind watching like conspiracy stuff, but I, I think where I have a problem is like, um, when it's labeled as being like factual, or, or even if it's like not labeled as being anything at all so it's like you just go into it and it's like well 
is this all opinionated? Is this fact? You know, Certainly. like what what's kind of going on here? So you got to read between the lines. Yeah. But like what what I will say that I think is so interesting about like your story, Josh, is I, I think that like and don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm not saying that you shouldn't play into the prism thing. I think you should, and I think the reason you should is because firstly, it's fucking crazy, and people just don't even believe it half the time. Uh, and I think another thing is is that it's actually very relatable to basically anybody who games and is online. Because I'm sure, like, I'll speak for myself, but, like, dude, I've said some questionable shit. I Evil said some... said questionable shit, you don't say. Bro, I, I said <laughs> some crazy stuff back in the day online, and, and, like, I'm like, bro, like, you went to prison for something, which was uh, along the same fucking lines of what I did when I was a naive kid as well. And it, it's yeah. like, it, and I'm sure there's loads of people out there. Bro, I, I'll tell you this, probably one of the, the dumbest things I did, this was years ago, I got muted on RuneScape, and um, I sent a really edgy. You used to be able to like rebuttal mutes and stuff yeah. on RuneScape. I, I sent. A oh, really mine were bad. I sent one saying, <laughs> oh, I literally, I literally wrote something saying that I'm like gonna go to Jagex and like gun them down." Like, oh, I don't know if you're telling us that. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? The, the dumbest part is. My fucking account got unmuted. It, it was worked. like, okay, verified. Like, you're good. And then a few, <laughs> day, a few days later, I got, like, an email from Jagex being like, like, you basically can't say this shit, bro. Like, Jeez. you're just like, Imagine you can't say this working. shit. Like, it's like, like, the email said, bring it, pussy. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> bring it. It was just like, but but my point is, is like, how many times have you guys said something to your friends online that has been fucking terrible or stupid or just like, you know, you know, it's it's just Hon chat honestly, I've never said up, said things like that, so I'm good. I can honestly. imagine, I can imagine that you haven't, to be fair. But I think most I of think us a, a good have. percentage have. I definitely wouldn't go so far as say like everyone. I think almost everybody has at least seen some crazy oh, shit. As I've far as whether or not they went so far as to shit. say it themselves, I'd say I'm gonna be bold here. I'm gonna say at least seventy percent, man. In our age bracket, have at said least, something. Yeah, but yeah. that's COD, Halo, RuneScape. <laughs> you know what I mean? The anonymity of online was kind of a little spark of our generation for a bit mm -hmm. there until you know. That guy got arrested for whatever he did. Well, oh, yeah. it's more like a freedom thing. Like, hate is bad, right? But, like, the ability to talk shit online in, like, a non-caring manner is just freedom, right? I love those memes yeah. that go into, like, the Call of Duty lobbies. They're like, <laughs> you and the boys, after the lawyers find your, your logs from Call of Duty and you're just in the jail and shit, you know? I love those, but, like, why not just fuck around online? I mean, you know, sadly, you got slave that was un it's weird that that happened to you and you just see all these people making millions off runescape in the black market and they're untouchable and they're i know man beautiful yeah. houses and they're taunting the j mods and they're dosing the servers and you go and type Working one sentence bro and you're like sent and i'm like hey, hey well i mean like like i always say it largely comes down to america yeah won the lottery yeah i was the one the one yeah i was the, the one, the <laughs> the one, the one in a Yo, billion um i want to get back to your channel idea though uh so so obviously, you know, you like you said, like conspiracy stuff, a lot of it could be hit or miss. But like, I I think you're you're a very grounded person. Like you're you're very critical, right? So obviously, you you're not just gonna, you know, look up a, just anything. You're gonna like really look Absolutely. for some substantial shit. And I think that that would be a an incredibly, uh, like in terms of potential, like uh, as a big YouTube channel, I I think it has crazy potential because like I've noticed the past few years, like the true crime stuff, like. You know, and like yeah, the psychological absolutely. stuff that people like, you know, they love yeah, that JCS stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. Well, obviously and those channels, yeah, those channels are, are well done though. Like those, you know, those guys you know, do some really good research and shit. Most of them, mm -hmm. right? So I feel like, yeah, you you have that like criticalness, right? It, know, it ties in with sure. what Rakesy said. The way that Rakesy said what yeah. bothers him about conspiracies, and it's with me too, is a lot yeah. of it comes down to most conspiracy theories end with an open-ended question, and that's people's evidence. Is like, well, why did he do this? Like, for example, one guy that I knew that mm. said the Oklahoma City thing was fake or whatever it was, or the government did it, he said, well, you know, when Timothy, when, when the guy who did it was fleeing, the cops went to pull him over, and he pulled the truck over and acted like everything was normal. I wouldn't have done that. I would have been running if I just blew up a building, man. That shows you the government told him, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, bro, you can never. That's not evidence. That's not even evidence. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever heard of playing it cool? I was like, also, I had this conversation <laughs> in prison for one thing. So, like, I don't really trust your opinion on how to get away from the cops, my G. 
Because just being totally honest with you, like like, like, I'm not sure that where we're sitting right now is you need to say, you know, he did this wrong with the cops. Because I don't think we're experts on what to do with the cops. Yeah. That's um, a vibe right there. Prison conspiracy theory conversations, bro. That's a bro, fucking vibe. This guy specifically didn't believe literally anything that's ever happened. I mean, moon landing, JFK, Columbine, like you name it, it wasn't like that, bro. And so, yeah. like, I, that's very frustrating to me. And that ties in with what what Rice Cup and Racy were saying. You know, you got to be critical of these things. And that's mm-hmm. exactly why I mentioned the specific one that I did. This Terrence Yake in Oklahoma City. The facts, the undisputed facts are insane. Um, The guy... I I don't know anything about this story. You know know what I was thinking about? Like, we could have a whole podcast Mm -hmm. where we go into, like, crazy stuff like this, especially... Well, not crazy, but I mean, like, very entertaining, very, you know... (laughs) Uh, uh, and Josh could like kind of take us through, man. It would be like a conspiracy theory Dude, podcast, like, but backed by things that may, it's like you're trying to turn people like this is what happened. Like, here's a story. Do you believe right. it? No. I think you're facts and like your opinions on it need to be separate. Yeah. I like I like documentaries where they do that, and that's what I would want to do. I don't want to say I'm going to tell you the facts first. This is what mm-hmm. we know for sure happened. You know, and, and the Terrence Yankee thing, man. Long story short, the dude was a police officer in Oklahoma City for 10, 15, 20 years, something like that upstanding uh, community member. You know, everybody loved him. Everybody knew him. He was a very good man, man. He was, he was a good police officer. And he was apparently happened to be near when the bombs, the bombing happened, the, you know, the Oklahoma City bombing. He was a first responder because he was an all, he was off duty. As far as the government knows, right, he was not supposed to be anywhere near this building, but he was off duty. He saw the explosion. He ran. And when he got there, his testimony repeatedly, and this is verified, was that what they said happened did not happen. He said there were some kind of, go- there were government agents already there for one thing, he said. Okay, this is a respected local police officer uh, mm-hmm. that was a, an upstanding community member for a very long time. He dug through the rubble for like 10 hours, saving lives, bro, dragging people out of this thing, covered in blood, dust, a hero. He's an absolute hero. And he said that he saw some kind of strange machine in there. And, and I'm telling you, I don't like conspiracies like this, right? Because, I mean, you obviously would want to know things like what would there possibly be a motive? Why would a government ever, you know, be complicit in this type of thing? The feds show up, kick all the local cops out. Okay, the feds show up. This is a federal thing. It was a federal building. The feds, you know, the feds. So the state cops got to go. You got to get out of here, man. Right. They tried to make him sign a statement saying he saw McVeigh do this and that and escaping the scene. All this. He said no. He wrote like a nine page report on what he saw happened. Okay, would not really talk about it too much. The main witness to all this is, is his wife and some notes that she has left over in his handwriting that are verified to be his. Right. He um. He would not comply, would not sign the statement that they made him sign. They, they kept losing his statements and saying, no, you're going to get in trouble, blah, 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 blah. He refused. He ended up dead, bro. He ended up dead by, by he, he, he bulleted himself in the back of the head. Oh, yeah, that's normal. From this far back, Usually before he goes dragged bullets. himself through a field while he shallow cut his arms, oh, my which God. were full of dirt and mud because he was dragged. Oh, yeah. I say the worst Fed agents of all time, bro. Yeah, make it look like he killed himself. Uh, yeah, they clearly, uh, not even point blank or anything. His, his, the whole circumstance of his death was super suspicious. He told his wife, he said Bro. that he, when he went to the hospital after he saved, spent hours saving people, he had to go to the hospital, obviously. He said he was immediately visited by FBI agents. And they basically told him, like, your ass is grass. You didn't see anything. And this is now, that, now that we don't have any written testimony from him of. That's his wife says that. His wife says that when she saw him in the hotel room, I mean, the hospital room, he was wigging out. He said, you've got to get me out of here. The feds are coming to get me right now. This is some, you know, men in black type shit, I guess it was. Or, or I'm mm-hmm. sorry, the Matrix. You remember, like, the Matrix agents are coming to get him? And there's, like, what? where do you even go? Um, and he ended up dead shortly today. thereafter. Yeah. And, and it's crazy. He was so, a so, beloved what, character in the city. What Was it, like, a bank that was – what was the building that was broken? It was a federal building. So, like, okay. uh, you know, they handle – it's a government building where, I mean, I, I guess that mail and all kinds of stuff, every city I think has one, you know, it's a federal building. Post um, I think a post office was in it. I think they had it. I know they had a daycare and it. it was a huge building because kids, oh, kids died in the explosion. You know, the, the daycare YMCA was blown up. Government buildings, apparently. All right. mm. Yeah, it was, it was like a, a huge complex. So it was like a building, building complex. Yeah, yeah, it was I a building mean, complex. All kinds of different parts in it and different government shit going on. And mm. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't, I don't remember if I looked into what the conspiracy theorists would claim a potential motive for this would be. But I do know that Terrence Yakey, by all accounts, by everybody in Oklahoma City, was not crazy. He wasn't a liar. He was a good man. He had two kids. He was a married mm-hmm. man. He was a cop. And he was a first responder by accident. And it seems like that was like the almost like the out of control factor, if you if you know what I mean. They didn't expect this cop to get there immediately. Very strange, man. Yeah, and I, and yeah, I really want to look into that. And I want to tell, you know, I want to make a video about the actual facts. I need to brush up on them. There are other details that I'm not sure if they're factual or not. See, I and I think this is there. why you, you would make a great channel for that, because you don't rush into things. You're just like making sure everything is 
as substantiated as possible before you right. make any of your own conclusions. And I, and I think people would just love to know the facts, regardless if you draw any real conclusions or if you think you can, right? It's just like, it's, a good it's point. just an interesting... Well, I, I love stuff yeah. like that. I love the right. dark point, right? podcasts that are factually <laughs> based and have eyewitnesses. And that's why it's like, it'd be cool to have another podcast. We all like brush up on everything, dude. I got a couple things I'd love to talk about in that realm, bro. Because, uh, you know... Do a collab. Hey, don't get me started on ancient Egypt. <laughs> oh, please, bro. I'm down for some ancient wait, Egypt. Wait, 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 hold on. Let's, oh. let's talk about more like uh, what Josh has been doing RuneScape career-wise before we get right, too deep right. into you guys that. Want that you know? We'll do it for the after likes. hour. Yeah, that's the after likes, hour. Dude. That's the right after hour. Okay, we after will go dude. deep. <laughs> dude, I've got, I've got, like a, I've got a, a little add-on slash follow-up to that. So, um, obviously, since everything that happened to you, uh, go into prison, go into federal prison, uh, and like, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, but that that's like your government's prison. It's not like the regular prison. It's like separate, right? right? The country. It's where you go if you get in real deep shit. Like, is that correct? Yeah, it's either you committed an insanely heinous crime, you know, that affected affected multiple states or cities, you know, or anything over the internet, obviously, or you ripped off billions of dollars using wire fraud, etc. So there's pretty much no middle ground. The, right. uh, the low jail. security is yeah, way way more laid back than state. And the high security is way, way more violent than state. So it's like a magnified version. So I, I think this, the answer is going to be quite obvious. But like, since this experience and since it's all happened, like, has your opinion on, on like the government has it changed by this experience? Because obviously, you know, we we had you on last time and we spoke all about what happened and how you felt about it. But like, how how would you describe the way that you you look and trust your government now? since all of this has happened dude it's non-existent man <laughs> you know i it you nailed it bro i was very naive and it, it, it trips me out when i you know every now and then just once in a blue moon i get a hater bro somebody thinks he's the first person to ever type my name on google and read the government motion you know which this is the thing it's a government motion so like i want to understand that people read that and they automatically just assume like oh this guy's a maniac but like until i was in the process i didn't know the government's allowed to lie in motions I didn't know they're legally allowed to say literally anything that they want. You know what I mean? They, they, a legal motion doesn't have the rules that a courtroom does. In a legal motion, when they know that this is going to get leaked to the public, you know, on your public page or whatever, they can say he fucked a thousand goats. I think I said that last time, man. And in that motion, in your response motion, you have to prove that you didn't have sex with a thousand goats. And if you can't, then you did. That's how that works, right? I didn't know it worked like that, man. I was naive. I assumed that cops prosecute bad people, man. And if they have any reason to believe that you were not trying to do something bad or you were just messing around, that they will fight in your favor, in your defense, drop the charges. I was wrong, man. They want numbers, especially the feds. The feds want numbers. They care about the biggest amount of convictions they can get with the biggest sentences. And I did not think that. And it sounds like conspiracy shit, man, but I got caught in this net myself. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't affect enough percentage of the population for it to become a mainstream issue. I always say nobody wants to raise the banner of we're going too hard on the federal criminals. Hey, we... Sentencing reform, yeah, let the criminals out. Who the fuck wants to raise that banner? So the government has gotten completely overzealous, over prosecutorial, and it's less than like a tenth of a percent of people will ever be affected by this issue, but it's enough for them to make billions on, man. I, I think last time I even went into telling you guys about how we make military clothes in federal prison, bro. They pay you in boxes of zebra cakes to outfit the entire military. Wow. You know, it's, it's a great deal for them. The more people that they get, the cheaper labor they get, they're paying you three cents an hour to outfit the American military, bro. That's a win-win for them. Crazy. So, it, it another, another a follow-up like, question I, I have is like what we spoke about previously. Uh, I think you said it yourself was that they made an example of you, right? And it's like that's what it felt like at least because they threw the book at you and they went as far as they possibly could with it. And like mm -hmm. you said, they they did some shady shit. So yep. I, I guess like my most logical question to follow up on that is like, do you think that it worked? in the sense of like where they made an example of you people know your story now it's fucking shocking have you, you seen the peak that... hairs bro on well, this is this is this is what i'm have asking you seen do dead you... man mode i mean i don't I think know. so bro i don't think these but people like, care do, do, you that, no. do you think that it may have had an effect on like people online and the way you know because obviously they didn't want this stuff to happen now your Certainly. story's out there do, do you think that's had an effect on people I, i've I'll had speak... I'll speak for myself quickly. I just say, like, I, after hearing what happened to you, there's no way I'm typing anything stupid online. Like, it's just, <laughs> that's my, like, personally, like, I'm just not even going to take that risk. It's just like, 
Because it happens. Can to you, it can happen to anybody. Certainly. You know? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll say that I've been told by, what was that, Bryce? No, you can go. I'll, I'll go after you. I was just going to say that I've been told by a lot of people the same thing that you said, man. Um, as for whether or not people are blowing smoke up my ass or whatever, you know, and when they generally say it, you know, I can't attest to that. But I've been told it several hundred times. And the way that I see it is that if there was somebody, and I've been told in earnest by people, I feel like, and to where I really believed them, they said, bro, I used to be so toxic. I used to say the most violent, insane shit because I was just anonymous on the computer. And then I saw your case and I stopped man um and the way that i see a man is that i came out of it uh better you know like I, we all know i'm sober now i'm married i mean i'm cali sober i don't drink or do anything other than weed um Hell yeah. you know that's, that's sober enough two kids mm -hmm. yeah exactly that's that's exactly man that doesn't give me any life that's issues, bob you know? marley sober right there baby you say yeah. sober mm. enough <laughs> sober like enough you know sober to, to enough. function yeah and, satisfactorily um, sober. everyone needs something baby you know? Yeah, you know, weed doesn't cause me any life problems. Nah, so exactly. um, now that I'm off probation, if I was still on probation, it would be causing me big life problems, but yeah. <laughs> I'm not anymore. Um, so the way that I see it, man, is that luckily when I was in high school and shit like that, when I was younger, I was a knucklehead. I was always doing dumb shit and always getting in trouble. And it kind of semi prepared me as far as RuneScape players go for what happened and what the ultimate course that my life took. That might not have been the case with every single RuneScape player. So if it had to happen to somebody, I'm glad that it happened to me that I came out of it better at the other end of it. And hopefully, Hopefully people, yes, will not say this shit that I said. And I'm still, I'm still toxic, okay? I am modern toxic. I just got, I got somebody from my closet the other day. You know what I did, man? I went and saw that son of a bitch at the Ferox Enclave, and I said, you lucky son of a bitch. You <laughs> motherfucking RNG dice roll, lucky cunt clown, lucky I wasn't taking you seriously. No prayer potion sipping ass. <laughs> and they're just like, we got him, bro. We yeah, got him like, again. He wins. He puts his claws on. Yeah, I know. The, my, my federal agent's like. But here's you put the, thing. the claws here's the thing. on? No. Yeah, you put my claws on, bro. And I was like, biggest PK of your life. No, it's like, okay, bro. It's okay. Bro. I've got the ultimate flex. All I got to ever say now is my iron's got an Ellie. Shut the fuck up. I'm not worried about it, bro. I got an Ellie on my iron, man. Shut up. Bro, my bro, is more than bro, yours. Bro, dude's like, you got any more Sweaty. to say? Puts on claws, you know? No, <laughs> but I, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Last thing regarding that, you know, because like, we want to know what you've been doing on RS and stuff. But before I that, though, I, I, you, right? Sorry, I just want to say, though, like, so obviously, uh, Rixie's like, damn, I'm never being toxic ever again. But I'm biased, right? Because I, I've, I've, the oh, only right, toxic I do is being passive aggressive, right? On RuneScape. Fair. Okay, so yeah. I never will call people like, you know, really ridiculous names or tell them to die or something, right? But so, right. and, but, but I did learn something from your story, though. A different kind of lesson, right? You know how, like, you, you know, you watch these, like, you ever watch these shows, like, I Shouldn't Be Alive, where people, like, they get lost or something, and then they're, like, in this situation where, they were just in a vacation and next thing you knew they were like almost dead almost like dead to like survival and then they come back alive yeah. and you're like oh my god i can't be that dumb or something right but it's like this is a gamer right you relate to me way more than some dude that's lost in mount everest right like i'm just like okay yeah. this, this dude playing runescape literally goes to jail for like seven years and ru basically ruined his like you know most of his young adult life i'm like damn i'm just luck i'm just lucky to be me you know like i'm just lucky that i'm not there that i can play runescape <laughs> like unhindered and like and just live you know right just live like live a normal Freedom life grind. Like, not being a not being a jail cell you know i'm just like damn i'm living good i just need to like not complain Gratitude, so man. much man about stuff i just gotta like enjoy what i got because that, that's the that's... lesson that i learned from you know like or reinforced that lesson right not necessarily yeah, the man. whole like yo don't talk shit and whatever I learned that already a long time ago, but like that is a different. I think that's a valuable lesson for sure. Yeah, that I think there's, there's more than one lesson to be learned in it. I for, agree, for man. For a gamer, that's... you know, especially for a gamer. So, gratitude is what changed my. That's why I'm different today, man. Because when I was in prison, is exactly I was thinking exactly what you just said. I was like, man, I really had a lot of freedom out there. I really yeah. could have done things. I could have gotten a job. I could have got my life together. I could have put the alcohol down or something, man. And now I don't have that choice. And once I don't have the choice anymore, then you got the clarity to go, man. I really had it going on out there, and I just threw it all away, you know. Yeah. So. Having right. that, you just that got clarity, you know. Now. Yeah, right. Now you got to chase. Yeah, it, uh, do I think you you're think back. That, you know, I think you're back. This could happen again to somebody else, by the way. Like, mm. yeah, the same thing nowadays. So, so the thing is that you wouldn't go to prison for it in this day and age. Literally, what right after I got to prison, um, the Alonis versus the United States Supreme Court ruling came down, which is that now there needs to be proof of criminal intent when you make these threats. Dude, nah. that's some bullshit. You would have been fine, bro. That's you were the mighty. My lawyer bro. knew that case was pending, bro. My lawyer knew that shit was pending in the Supreme Court too. That son of a bitch. He knew uh, that that case. Anyway, so yeah, that what that legally did was raise the standard for what I did. From you know what I did is blatantly hands down about it. No matter what way you cut it, illegal. 
period. You said it, you typed the words, that's it. They raised the standard to have some type of criminal intent. Now, that doesn't mean that you were going to do it. It doesn't mean you can say this, and as long as you weren't going to do it, you're good. Criminal intent can mean that you meant to cause a panic. You meant to cause an evacuation. You know, you meant to truly inspire fear or cheating. terror in people. Like, yeah. I feel like that'd be very hard to do on RuneScape. You know, that's Guys, like calling it a threat, cheat. you know. You couldn't be like, there's a bomb in Falador. You know, it's... Yeah, exactly. Bro, there's yeah, 20 well, I mean, like cannons. Said, it's oh, wait, that's extreme. a riot. You know? <laughs> Context <laughs> is important. It kind of sounds like you just described people uh, who swap. Like people yeah, who, yeah, who, yeah dude, fuck you know, those guys, man. No, that's the modern day, like, yeah, that, like that now, you know? That literally is, yeah. yeah I got swatted. Cool. It was just yeah. a little bit different because I actually ended up having like long term jail. legal issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, went, I, I went away for a while. It wasn't just a little swat slap yeah, on the wrist. This is oh, this what people do now, oh. though, the whole swatting thing. Which to is be fair, crazy. I swatted myself, really. I, I, this isn't quite the same. If somebody <laughs> else swatting so where they're swatting. just minding their own business, I did yeah. some dumb shit to get swatted, but still. Yeah. yeah. But, dude, I, I, I totally agree, by the way, man. Like, when you say, I wouldn't say you're saying that you're glad you went, but like the fact that you fucking survived that, knowing the circumstance. And that you're like here today, able to have like a rational conversation about it. What's like, I think that's a that's a huge testament, like to you, your character, what the fuck you've been through, and the fact that like you're you're now like you know you're doing content creation, you're fucking here, you know. Thank you. And you it, made it's it, like dude. that's a huge fucking testament. It really is. And mm -hmm. like, damn, bro. Like, you know the does... hard part. The hard part to admit is that if I would have gotten released like after two years, I wouldn't probably wouldn't be doing good today you know it was about two and a half really? years or so before i had that kind of epiphany of man yeah. i was really fucking my life up and blaming other people for my mistakes you know and stuff like that and so unfortunately that excessive amount of time still worked in favor of the you know the long-term goal of my life i guess if you will because mm -hmm. if they let me out after two years i would have just been bitter about it for the rest of my life dude i'm telling you that it was eating me up being in prison for this dude at no, first yeah, at you first. had your ego death right that like yeah changed you quite exactly for sure that, that's pretty much that's pretty much yeah, what it boils down to dude. man is i realized that i've only ever been me i'm one dude and i need to stop judging everybody else for all the mistakes that they made in their life whether it impacted me or not and take responsibility for my shit and stop mm -hmm. oh this person let me down or that person did this and i can't do this because they fuck all that i was making excuses and once i've really put it on myself man i'm not saying it's easy for anybody to do but you can't just let other people man especially old shit hold you back from going mm -hmm. places in life yeah. I, I even decided the country that i live in can't hold me back man fuck the fed dude, dude it, 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 uh, sounds, yeah. it just sounds like you grew like you yeah. just grew as a person and do you know what's crazy most like, people don't man most people don't bro there, no, there don't. are people there are people that genuinely don't and it, it's kind of they bad, never will. yeah I, no I, it's, I, it's a revolving door sadly it, it's you, crazy isn't it but it really does sound like you know the time you spent in prison actually gave you a different like look on life in some ways you know it so it's, like, it's kind of it's it's like a tragic thing but at the same time it's like like how how would you how would you put it into words like would you say it was something that kind of made you the person you are today having to go through like this really horrible circumstance undoubtedly man um one part of it is exactly like rice was talking about man gratitude really put my life in perspective and even like even for before i got locked up when i was a self self-imposed junkie you know and i was just drinking all day by myself and stuff like that even in that moment i had more freedom than some people do in other countries you know in their best life and so I, I don't know it put that perspective and another thing that was super important man coming back to the ego that rice guy was just talking about and, and that breaking and what a big deal that was for me for some reason ironically through my years in prison through observation man i i feel like i almost came to see what 99 percent of conflict and strife boils down to and it's always the ego it's always some person putting themselves above somebody else. And it's going to lead to fight. It's going to lead to violence. It's not taking other people's considerations, you know, feelings into consideration 99.999% of the time. And so through observation of that and being, especially because I wasn't involved in gangs, I wasn't involved in the violence. I was a third party to this, you know, watching the shit around me that was going on. And every single time it was some stupid problem where one knucklehead was putting himself over this knucklehead. And it led to people sometimes getting stabbed, you know, in 50 fights versus 50 fights. And I learned a lot about conflict and strife, man, and killing your ego, being humble and just treating humanity like your brothers, man, and trying to keep shit lighthearted, man, having a good time and not screwing people over, looking a man in the eye and telling him you're going to do something, you do it. You can shake hands with him and agree on something. You're not trying to go behind his back. Just shady dealings, man. It was always shady shit that made people, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know how to put it. I learned a lot about how to not be a dick from watching how many yeah. dicks there were around me. <laughs> I learned how to not be an asshole from because Literally I was completely surrounded by assholes.
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Literally, he in, said in fifty versus fifty. That's like a <laughs> literally sound of my dick, bro. Like he described that. Was that like in the lat, like the food area, the oh, food dude. fight? What's that? Uh, the, fifty oh, versus fifty. Yeah. 50 oh, you never and told us the, about the that. one time. The one time that I really saw like a huge fight, it was actually um, a Hispanic gang going again at it with the Puerto Ricans, uh, who were I don't think the Puerto Ricans were officially a gang. You know what I mean? Maybe homies. Like what's up? No, this is uh, this is the California Mexican gang and versus Puerto Ricans and um, no, yeah, any gang from California automatically you don't they're they're violent. Um, but nobody got stabbed or anything like that. They were on the soccer field. It didn't happen inside. Mm. The one time that there was a huge brawl inside of the prison that I was at, it was like two weeks before I got there. And all I heard was that the son of a bitch ran out and picked up two trash can lids and was just beating the hell out of people with trash can lids. Yeah, they, and they had to replace all the trash cans in the unit to these like welded down like plastic ones that were attached to the floor and bolted down because this dude ran around and just went fucking King Kong with these trash Holy cans. Shit. <laughs> but, um, the only time that it really happened, it was outdoors yeah. for me. Okay. But but man, it all comes down to just something stupid like that, man. And that's that's part of what I learned. Like Racy Racy was asking about, you know these these dudes playing soccer, and this dude bumps up against this dude too hard. Well, hey man, that guy thinks he got over on me, bro. I'm not letting that dude think he got over on me. He he pushed me, bro. He pushes him. You know, it was an accident. It was an accident. And this dude's ego is over here. He's over here. Like, oh man, now all my homies think I'm a bitch because this dude bumped into me and I didn't do nothing. Now I got to do something. And then the next thing you know, there's people out here bleeding, missing teeth, eyebrows mm. split open. You know, and Yo, it's all just ego, just totally preventable. Like, hey, my bad, you, that's literally the. Don't you have to do that in prison though, or your cheeks get taken? I wouldn't go so far as to necessarily say cheeks get taken. The thing about it is, if somebody if if somebody walks up and pushes you, yeah, okay, you you know yeah. that's a little bit different. But for it, ninety most of the time, it starts with something innocuous, a bump, somebody not saying excuse me, you know, somebody not walking properly. Boy, I tell you, I think I mentioned to you guys before that I get such <laughs> bad anxiety trying to walk in public now because in prison there's a method to it, and it could be simple shit like that, bro. Like you cut in front of me in line and you didn't even mean to do it, you know, and dude turns around. Yeah, definitely if it's intentional, though. If somebody pushes you or calls you a name or something like that, yeah, you have to go. But, like, the incident that started that soccer riot, they called it a riot. I don't think it really counts as a riot because they didn't fight the cops. They just fought each other. Um, it started with a bump, bro. It started with just some dude bumping into somebody. Just that simple. You know, luckily, I mean, nobody got killed about it, even though that, that gang, one of their rules is that they have to have knives. So I'm pretty sure literally all of them had a knife with them on the soccer field, and nobody used one or anything like that. So could have, though. Could have. Somebody could have died because you got your elbow bumped into. It's crazy, man. Yeah. So I learned about avoiding that, man. I learned that, like, most of the time, the best quote that I can give you for it, man, ne- what, what, how does, exactly does it go? Never attribute to malice that which is best attributed to stupidity. Have you ever guys heard, you guys heard that before? No, Did, I haven't. Somebody I've, doing, I've, I've what, heard what does similar it mean? things. Explain it. Explain yeah. it. Never attribute to malice that which is best attributed to stupidity. Just because don't you can't assume that just because they did that, they're trying to piss somebody off, hurt somebody, or get over on somebody. It might just be that they're dumb. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes people are just legitimately stupid. You, it's dumb. Lot. It's dumber There's for you to apply meaning to what other people do. Is basically what it's saying. You know what I'm saying? Like never attribute to malice that which is best attributed to exactly. It just means most of the time people are just being stupid. And they're not trying to hurt you or hurt anybody around you, you know, and that us taking it that way is really what's stupid. Mm. And I, I, that quote has just lived with me since prison, man. Somebody said it in there. Two of them that stuck with me. Familiarity breeds contempt, which is, you know, the longer that you're around somebody 24 hours a day, you get sick of them. You start nitpicking at each other and uh, never attribute to malice. That yeah, which is best yeah. Attributed to it's, it's like basically paranoia. Stop being such a paranoid bitch. You know, like that's kind there of one way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Now, so, now, some lighter questions, though, yeah. real quick. We've got some questions from the, yeah. the community. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, Bring it on. How did Josh celebrate his birthday in prison? Oh, man. Um, so it was a little bit different every time, I guess. I had quite a few fucking birthdays in prison. But um, <laughs> the, the standard was what's called a doo-wop. You make a doo-wop for yourself on your birthday. It's where you take a honey bun. And uh, if you're feeling real fancy, uh, you wrap it up in saran wrap, put it under the warm water in your sink for a minute so it gets nice and warm, you know? Oh, uh, you spread some peanut butter on that bitch and crush up some M&Ms. It's called a doo-wop. It's like a little birthday cake, you know? <laughs> but um, Fuck. My, my first birthday in jail, I was I turned 20. Uh, I was still in county, not in prison yet. And um, like two or three dudes in there, and this is jail, not prison, before anybody who's been locked up is like, ha-ha, oh, candy bars. But a couple of dudes actually gave me candy bars, man, that were like friends of mine, man, you know. And in prison, you can't take a candy bar from somebody like that unless you fuck with them tough and they're a really good friend of yours. But like oh. it was it was lighthearted, you know, and they were friends of mine. And um, my 21st birthday, I was at uh, Butner, North Carolina for a mental evaluation. That's when I was on the crazy block with all the insane people that were trying to prove they were insane to get off the hook for their case. And while I was at outside on the wreck yard playing guitar, those dudes actually made a doo-wop for me. Man, it was really cool. Whenever I came back in from the wreck yard, they wrote happy birthday, big 21 on the cardboard, and I, and we had cut it all up, and I sat there and made sure everybody took a bite before I took one. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm just being honest with you, bro. It's crazy. Cool. No, that was on the crazy block. That was on the, that was on the insane ward. We, we yeah, it was on the crazy block. block. Oh, so these, these, dudes were, these dudes were like not legitimately insane. They were just playing insane to try and most of them. Mm-hmm. Most, most of them, them. <laughs> most of them were faking it. Yeah, most of them were faking. No, 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 not nice, man. Because like no, no, no a buddy of mine. I, I got a little fucked up one for you, man. A buddy of mine that was in, on that block, right? I'll call him a buddy of mine for fuck's sake. A guy that was in there with me. Um, he tried to blow up his work with a propane tank, bro. I said tried now. He tried. He went oh, to his work with a propane right, tank, turned right, the gas yeah. on, smoked cigarettes, and was flicking them at the tank, right? Trying to blow his work up. He calls and tells him to blow up the building. And this dude sounded like a cross between Napoleon Dynamite and Cho, the VTech shooter. Like, he was like, hey, I'm going to come up there. Like, he had the most distinctive voice ever because everybody's like, hey, Pat, how did they, how did they know it was you that called? <laughs> <laughs> they said they recognized my voice. <laughs> you, you don't say, right? But check it out. Check it out. So he called and told him he was going to do it, right? He got his charges dropped to making false threats, bro. Oh, first, wow. his what? charge was the same as mine. He, we had the same charge at first, transmitting threats to destroy buildings by means of fire and explosives. Same charge. He got his dropped to a lesser charge, bro, because, because he uh, didn't succeed. It got dropped to making false threats, which has like a mandatory, ma- oh, like a maximum three years. If, if they would have given me even his crime, when he tried to do it, I could not have gone for as long. But here's the kicker, right? So he got a less charge. Three years or something is the most he can get for it, right? But he's found mentally incompetent to stand, stand trial by reason of insanity and sentenced to an indefinite confinement in a mental institution where he did at least five years. Oh. So. That's, yeah, that, I don't know. What's one's worse? It's a gamble. You can yeah. end up longer. You can end up going away for longer. I heard it's for hard to years. really get out of a mental institution. I've had yeah. family members go in, and even if you're, like, pretty sane, they almost try to just force you into the that shit. Like, you have you to prove your sanity. It, yeah, gas Like, you. hard. It's yep. why, why do people do it then? Do they do it because they're they're worried about like the harm? No, you know it's fucked up. Prison. One or? of my family members. I'm just talking about the insane ward real yeah. quick. Called for uh, suicide help. Right? She's like, okay, I don't want to um, do this, you know. And she thought she'd get some help. She got sent to an insane area. Wow. And then they yep. got charged, and they almost didn't let her out. Yep. That's America right there. So when you say you don't trust the government, you don't trust these. War- they're so fucked and they don't care about any of this shit, bro. It's mm-hmm. honestly, I'm never calling a suicide hotline. I wish I could tell you to call one. I'm sure they're good. But if that means you got to pay for like a one night stay and maybe get locked up in like some crazy place with a bunch of homeless people, I, I, I fuck, fuck that, dude. Yeah. You'll probably, you'll probably find that, better mental yeah, health by bro, not doing that. Yeah, to be fair, mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of these social like services, they're just so under like funded and just not properly funded. You know, uh, not, not, not just funded. not properly like. They like just, they're not they're helpful. Like they're, yeah, they're, they're just like not they're properly, properly like you know done. I, I yeah, like yeah. it's the same here yeah. in the UK. Like, I mean, there probably are like programs, but it's literally always like a charitable thing. Yeah, it's like some dude who's been su- super successful and has his own business, made a lot of money. Like, he'll have like something set up, like a program or something, and they donate to it. But there's nothing like officially established. It's usually and a tax it's, write-off, mm. probably. It's a difficult. It's a difficult. Yeah, I just well, don't like actually, I don't want to say bro. properly funded, right? Some are, but like, I, I mean, more so, like they're just not properly like structured, and and you know, they bro. probably need some proper reevaluation on how I'll they. T- I'll tell you this: like, yeah. you need some love, bro. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. like I feel like I'm, I'm not the like only person to be like this. Thing, yeah. Like, if I got sent to a <laughs> mental establishment, you need it forever. Started, they started to gaslight me into like being like, "Yo, you're fucking crazy," and like, you know, it's like you know, what gaslighting, right? Mm-hmm. I genuinely think I wouldn't get out because I would go crazy. I would just be yeah. like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Like now you're in the trap. Dude, they yeah, watch you like dress stuff. in there too, dude. You just be sitting in there. They're like, watch. I imagine. Gotta watch. No <laughs> weapons. <laughs> you be popping at you. No. They, they, they take your ass cheeks, bro. <laughs> bro. Watch out, Racy. Watch out. So man. Where, where do people want to go to these mental? They probably don't. No one does. They're, they're calling, they're calling for help. They don't know it's on another line. They got no, the no, Call for help, bro. You get sent to this place, dude. Wait, what are we talking about? about crazy. In prison. In prison. People oh, we're talking about prison again? My bad. <laughs> yeah. All right. Why, why do they want to get sent there? A lot of times it's sweeter time, man. Um, a lot of times hospitals have the ability to <laughs> prescribe narcotics, which is a big difference when you're doing 20 years mm. between whether or not every now and then you get to pop a little Percocet or not. You know? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, that'll make a difference in a man's bid. But also, some of them still allow smoking. Some of them still allow vaping and various types of tobacco usage. There are a lot of benefits to actually being in a federal mental hospital as opposed to a prison. The prisons are a lot more violent in general. Um, and similar to how um, at the low security that I went to, 
it was such laid back time that nobody really wanted to get in trouble or mess up because they didn't want to get somewhere sent somewhere worse. Similar in the hospital. It's very much subdued because everybody there at least has a level of they're cognizant of the fact that they're at a sweet spot. You know, um, the place where I actually went to Butner for that middle evaluation has got multiple prisons and complexes and they have one of the bigger federal prison hospitals. It's Butner Medical Complex and everybody wants to go there. Like if you're doing time, if you have to do 20 years, you'd rather be at Butner Hospital than at Butner 1 or Butner 2 at normal prisons, you know, because you get some dope every now and then, you know, they can smoke and stuff like that, which is crazy. Isn't that ironic? Why the fuck you can't smoke in regular federal prison? You go to federal hospital when you die in a lung cancer, they give you some cigarettes, huh? I thought prison I, I thought, was like the currency. Uh, I like yeah, cigarettes are like the GP. Nah, not unfortunately not. Not in the feds. They took smoking out in like 2006. So, um, I mean, we still black market smoke. So it's as good as gold, but it's technically contraband. The official currency is postage stamps. That's like our GP, our actual can you, GP. Can you tell us how they get the contraband into prison? I believe you explained it last podcast, but I enjoy this story. <laughs> Assholes, vaginas, and crooked guards. It's pretty much 100%. Not necessarily in that order. Sometimes all three in, in one order or another. But, uh, oh, no. Yeah, orifices and corrupt guards. The uh, worst guards tacky on oh, yeah, man. They, yeah, IRL summoning levels. Um, they check their own bags, bro. They check their own bags. My mom came to visit me at Taldega one time, and I didn't even know this, but she said that a guy was getting to work, checking in, and he put his oh. own bag on the metal detector, scanned it, Cleared it, gave it the stamp of approval, put it on, and went into the prison. Like, it could have been a gun. Oh, in there. I, wow. When you said they checked your mother's bag, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, like, please. I'm so sorry, oh, bro. You're not allowed to bring a bag into visitation. You're not allowed to bring They can't wear wire clothing. They can't wear anything, man. No, okay. you got to know better. And also, I mean, my wife, whenever she was my fiance this last time I was locked up, she came to visit me and uh, wore the same outfit two days in a row to be sure because of the rules, you know, that of the dress code mm-hmm. rules. They will yeah. kick you out after you drive 12 hours to see your family. They'll kick you out in a heartbeat when you only got four hours to see them, you know. They love doing it, man. The guards are sadistic. And, uh, <laughs> oh, man. That's they cool. kicked her out the second day. On the second day, they said, nope, those pants are too tight. And she was like, I was literally here wearing this yesterday. And they're like, nope, there's a different lady. And she was just all mad. My wife was all had her makeup on and stuff. And this lady's over here being a catty bitch. Yeah. Did you get conjugal visits, by the way? Did Were you able to get those with fine? No, you had to be married. Mm. No, no, yeah. fed, no feds don't have any conjugal visits. They did. There'd be a lot less violence, in my opinion. There'll yeah. also be a lot more restitution payments for child support while they're working uniform. Zero trying to rights pay out, out there. Fuck, man. No, no conjugals in the feds. No conjugals, no smoking, nothing nothing fun, man, which, I mean, you shouldn't necessarily be having fun, you know, when you're in prison, but I damn sure would say that boredom counts as cool and unusual punishment, but that's why they give us guitars and cards and stuff. Well, they say on the emotional spectrum, like, boredom is right next to disgust. So when you're bored, you're disgusted. You're, like, on the edge of disgust and hate. Right. Your yeah. brain just constantly wants info. So it is definitely a form of torture for sure. Also, yeah. I just want to know, like, when you told people why you're in prison, how'd they react? They laughed almost every single time, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of the dudes that were, like, older heads that have been locked up 20, 30 years didn't really get the context, you know? They, like, they'd struggle to, like, I don't really get it. And I'd be like, okay, <laughs> you play, you, you remember the Atari? Okay, it's like it, that. But you're everybody, about Pog, bro? yeah, man. No, bitch, that wasn't a goal. Fuck you. Nice to flex, cunt. <laughs> um, and I would have to explain to them, you know. But most of the time, it'd be like, you know, oh man, my kids play those games, man. That's crazy. I heard my son one time saying he was gonna murder this dude's house, you know, whole family and stuff like that. I remember that. And I was widely regarded as having the second dumbest case um, <laughs> of the modern era of federal prison. Because believe it or not, most people in federal prison, after they've been in there for a couple of years, you know each other, bro. I transferred prisons once or twice. You know, I did a time at a couple different prisons, and I knew 20 to 30 different people every time that I changed prisons. Like, after a couple of years, you yeah, get what I'm saying? It's kind of, yeah. yeah, it's called having big feet. You just, once you've been in there a long time, you get to know each other. And, um, you know, I totally forgot what I was going to originally say about yeah, that. Because I started thinking about one? the fact that the, who's the, the crazy one? guy, um, the first one I went to was Talladega, Alabama. Oh, no, I mean, like, um, who's the the number one dumbest? Reason oh, yeah, that, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah the worst yeah, was was. Thank you. Uh, the, the number one was a guy who pissed on a post office. He oh pissed. God. It was federal now because it was a post office. And he, he was drunk walking home. He pissed on a post office. He got six months in federal prison because he had a, a criminal history. It was a misdemeanor. Or, no, it wasn't a misdemeanor. It was a felony. They gave him only six months for it, which should have been county jail. But since it was federal, he had to go to the feds. He had a, and this is the rumor now. I heard this much. Everything that I just told you is confirmed through the word of mouth. I trust it, okay? I know that sounds stupid through the word of mouth, but inmates, you know, I promise you that they're hearing stories to this day. You know, there was a guy that was locked up for talking trash on a video game. You know, the rumors and the legends stay. Um, <laughs> yeah. the, the, all of what I've already said is true. There was a guy who pissed on a fit, you know, on a, on a post office, drunk, 
six months, criminal history got sent there. Now, the part that I cannot confirm, but that I did hear from most of the inmates who knew that story was that that guy died in prison on that six month sentence. He got stabbed. He got sent to a high security and died. Ain't that some shit? Oh he man, pissed off somebody just over a misdirection piss. Like God damn. Yeah, because he was drunk walking home, stopped to pee on a building, and he didn't notice it was a a post office. You know, if he'd have yeah. taken 10 more steps, then it would have been on a sidewalk and he'd have got a ticket for it. Oh, but since it was a federal wait. building and he had a criminal history, Bro, he better like get I said, a, I don't know for sure that he died. He better but, get a restart, you know? Like, he better get a life restart, you know, come back again. There's loads know? of, like, yeah, stories like that yeah. where people people have, like, pissed too close to, like, a, a park or something. Like, he, even people... Wait, well, you can't people, piss at a park? <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> no. 2022, no. man. Oh, shit. Dude, back in... You should genuinely be bro the amount of times i've been walking i do this walk and i i got like a fucking tiny ass bladder are you talking about the time when you shat your pants and threw your underwear <laughs> no, <laughs> I bet. no. But, yeah Was like every... <laughs> no. No, it's true. it is true but yeah you should be careful man you should ever never never take Over. your dick out close to a park that's like the rule <laughs> one Okay. Well, well, yo, okay. It's 1 a.m. No one's on the swings. <laughs> no, oh, bro. There's why you empty. know that, though. If the kids come back the next day, hit like... the swings with it, bro. There's grass, dude. You know what I mean? Okay, all right, fine. If it's on the grass, it's not like I, every Wednesday, I'm like, all right, which part next? No, I was like, back in my past. Night. And if you're me, you go to do it, and then immediately some lights flicker on, and the cops are there, like, hey, the dude in the bush outfit. <laughs> Binoculars. <laughs> got his ass. No, we got him again. CSI, zoom in. Wang is out. <laughs> Wang is uh, out. Wait till he unzips. Wait till he unzips. It's official, boys. Move. Tip is seen. It's the Levi's. It's the Levi's. I, I've watched enough American prison documentaries at this point. How many? Like a lot, dude. Quite a lot. I Why? Be, because it's. I've seen Prison stuff. Break. Is that close? No. Pretty close. Uh, no. no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, enjoy, I enjoy the show, but like. I watch it because it's truly fascinating. No offense to you boys, just how fucked up like your legal system is and your prisons. It's Boy, you live in the UK, crap. bro. It's probably not like, worse, hey, not, but you I'm ain't pristine. You, know I mean? you ain't no not Netherlands, bro. Dude, no Norway. I'm not saying the prison system here is like far yeah. superior, but like I'm telling you this, like if I went to prison here in the UK, like I would probably be okay unless I went looking for trouble. Whereas I feel like the difference is at an American prison, it's like trouble just comes looking for you. And it's eventually. Unavoidable, mm. Right? Yeah, well, and, eventually. Yeah, and, and it's fucking terrifying how it's... Anyways, regardless. So for what it's my... worth, I think a distinction between what you're saying and kind of what they said as well, because I agree with them, you know, from what I've seen, UK prisons, as far as, you know, violence level and stuff, aren't that much different than American, believe it or not. The, the big difference that it boils down to is the prosecution of the government itself, you know. Once you get to the prison, I think that, you know... There's a lot of similarities between America and UK, I think, but the process of getting there, how far they will go, and whether or not they give a shit about whether or not you're innocent or guilty might be viewed differently in the UK, you know? Because everybody that I know from the UK is like, bro, if I said what you said, I would not go to prison for it. They would probably come investigate, but it, now to be so, fair, it doesn't really happen in your country like it does in ours. But put it yeah. this way, like when you were saying earlier, like you're accused of uh, shagging lambs or whatever you gave as an example, and then you have to prove that as whales. So here in <laughs> yeah. the UK, we have. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to assume we do. Correct me if I'm wrong. Any of the viewers watching that we have a innocent until proven guilty policy. So it's like they have to prove that you did that. It's mm -hmm. not a case of disproving that you didn't do it, right? Sure. So what what my original question was going to be to you because I've watched a lot of uh, prison documentaries. I genuinely find it fascinating because I think that it's one of the like modern day toughest just like environments to fucking survive like it's something to be clued up on not that i ever intend on going to prison and hopefully i don't but it's like i would like to know that if i ever do what i'm gonna be facing and it, sure. it's almost like a fucking defense thing of mine to like kind of know what the environment's like um Bro, something... like when i first got to jail and i called that guy a bitch and 99 percent of people on the planet earth would have beaten the shit out of me but he said come here dude come here i'm gonna talk to you you don't ever say that in jail Ever. That's something people need to know. You know, if you, you that's a that's a very big tip right there. Don't call anybody a bitch unless you're ready to fight them. You Why know? did you call him a bitch? It was just like, hey, bitch. Joking. Or... joking. No, oh. I, I used to joke like that. I do not anymore. I do not. I've been brainwashed out of that. I've been. I can't yeah. help it. I'm, it's something that I'm working on mm -hmm. with therapy, bro. I cannot handle that word in certain contexts anymore. Yeah. Because I went in young, but like I made that mistake. 
And I think that's kind of what you're talking about there, right, Rexy? Like, that's a hot tip that you can use in a pinch right there. Don't call a man anything feminine at all. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Wait, so who was this guy? Who was this boy? Andy. Also, he was like, was he like your gel, like your friend in gel then? Or like, he, he was, was your person? sensei, dog. Oh. He was your sensei, dude. I mean, you could almost, to a small extent, you could sort of say that, I guess. I mean, yeah, I, I didn't know him outside of jail, but he knew, we knew all the same people, which just says a lot about my character back in that day. Um, so we knew who each other were and stuff like that, you know, but he was like eight, nine years older than me. Um, and he pretty much, yeah, he's the one that, he was real cool about it. And I, I'm telling you, if he didn't know who I was through the grapevine, I probably would have, me and him would have been fighting when I said that. But he just pulled yeah. me over to the side and was like, listen, man, I know this is your first time being in jail. But, like, if you, if you say that, somebody's going to punch you. You cannot say that unless you're ready to fight. That is a go word. And he said, and also, don't let nobody call you that word. <laughs> if anybody calls you that word and you don't punch them, they're going to come take your shit. So if they don't care if you win. They don't care if you lose. You're not going to die. If somebody calls you that, punch them. And I was like, okay. And now here I am fucking 10 years later trying to undo all this stuff, you know? <laughs> Yeah, oh, different environment yeah. now. Different I'm environment. Not lie, like, that guy could have taught you that lesson in a very different way. So, like, yep. fair, I do, because he could have just been a complete asshole and just whooped your ass. He should yeah. have, by all accounts. Yeah, <laughs> by I mean, all accounts. Any, I'm assuming if anybody fucking heard that, but I'm, even, I'm like, glad he broke the stereotype though for the, for that moment. You know, he did, just man. He 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 up. talked to me about it, and I, and I took the wisdom, and that's a fine example right there. Where most of the time in my life, I would have been an arrogant asshole and said, I'm gonna call you whatever I want or something like that. But I swallowed my pride and I said, all right, man, my bad. I didn't know it was disrespectful like that. You know, I'm not trying to get jumped on by every dude in here. I guess deep down you had a bit of that in you or, you know, I guess it was just waiting. It was just waiting to like kind of manifest fully, you know, when we're talking about like jumping, beating, wait, wait, let me me finish my question. I haven't, I've got halfway through. You want right. some, bro? <laughs> let me go. Let me go. Time what, out. What I was gonna say, what I was gonna say, okay, is I've seen a lot of documentaries, and I don't know if this is the case in federal prison. So, uh, enlighten me if this isn't. But as far as I'm aware, you don't have a fucking choice when you go to prison in America. It doesn't matter if you're racist or if you're you're not. It's like you have to effectively pick a side, whether you're oh. going to be in a gang or whether you're gonna be a lone rider. You, you have to, like, mingle with certain individuals. So my question to you is, is that what it was like for you? And also, you said yourself that, you know, you tried to, you humbled yourself, you had an epiphany, you tried to stay away from, like, violence and all the bad stuff, and you also tried to start being, like, a man of your word and you stopped making excuses for dumb shit, right? So you mm-hmm. took responsibility. So, like, my question to you is, did you get, like, recruited to a gang? And at the very least, like, what was that situation? Did you have to, like, side with a certain race of people? Or what was your experience? Sure, that's a good question, man. Um, First and foremost, largely what that boils down to is your security level. Um, Before I tell how it really related to me, I can give you a great example that a very, very good friend of mine, and I'm going to publicly call him my friend. His name is Brian, man. He was Aryan Nation. He's got a swastika tattooed on his arm, bro. And I'm saying this, this dude is my friend, okay? He's my cellmate for a little while at Talladega, and I'm not in this clan. I'm not clan. Oh my god, I'm not in his. Uh, not in his gang. Right? Is that why you shaved cellmate. the hair, bro? You can <laughs> That's what they said when I went on PKA. So it looked like American History X. But um, <laughs> I did you like called this dude? The Franco. Oh my god. By the way, sorry, real quick. Oh, oh, the the Franco, dude. Oh my god. I, 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 I was thinking of a chimp when I looked at you for some reason. I knew it, bro. The intro. <laughs> That's because he's showing his hair. Let me take the screenshot for the phone now. Can... <laughs> yes, please give us the Franco of what? People are tagging YouTube, good. like in the tag. Is... <laughs> <laughs> I hope you got it. Did you get it? That was great. That was All great. right. Um, so good. Yeah, they, they literally called this dude Arian Brian, man. He was ta- he had a patch. He, he put in his work. Yeah, that was that was his nickname, oh, man. man. And I was cellmates with him. And when that when that door closed at night at that medium security, he would sit there and go, "Bro, I got to get this shit covered up as soon as I get out of here." I can't believe this. Like he would sit there, he'd get high and look at it and just go, I fucked my whole life up. Yeah. Like, I can't he hated it, dude. He hated it. And he would tell you when that door closed, he said, Bro, I'm not racist and I don't believe in this. But I went to a high security federal penitentiary when I was twenty years old and it was join a gang, become a victim, or solitary confinement for the next nine years. I joined a gang. Yeah, that's yeah, it. No he choice, said it wasn't dude. nothing deeper than that. He said, I'm not racist, I'm not hateful like that. I did what I had to do to survive. I didn't go anywhere like that. Where I went to at Talladega like 40% of the compound was independent or peons, whatever you want to call it, like a gang of people that aren't a gang, you know? Now, that being said, so all I have to do in that case is I had to go show my paperwork, show them I'm not a sex offender. I didn't tell on anybody, you know, my paperwork's all good. And they said, okay, cool, we sit here. Now, 
cafeteria is divided by white, black, and Hispanic, right? That that's that's rule the rule. Um, if you if you're a white dude, you have to sit with the white people. If you sit if you're a white dude that sits on the black side, the black dudes will forgive you. The black dudes will forgive black dudes for sitting on the white side, but the white dudes won't forgive white dudes for sitting on the black side. Does that make sense? So automatically off the rip, I had to sit on the white side. Period. Because if you sit on the other side, then that's like that's that. Even if I wasn't in the gang or whatever. But at the end of the day, when the shit did hit the fan one time when I was at Talladega, it was about to become black versus white. At that point, it doesn't matter what gang the black guys are in. It doesn't matter if he's a blood and he's a crip. They're both black. They're on the same team now. So it really just depends on what kind of what kind of tensions popping off. In this particular instance, what happened was that a and I hate to even say this dude, a black dude touched the white TV, and it turned into this whole ordeal where a dude had told him to do it. The dude said, "Hey man, put that TV on channel three. And the dude was walking by the TV. He leaned up and clicked it. Next thing you know, all the supremacists are having a stroke, bro. I don't want to touch that what TV ever again, man. I'm not that, touching that bro. TV. He touched the TV, bro. No, nah, it's on. It's on." Next thing you know, both of the, the, the guy who asked him to touch the TV and change the channel and the guy who changed the channel both get the shit kicked out of him by their own gangs and have to get run up top into solitary confinement. Like, it was this whole ordeal, you know what I'm saying? And in that instance, a night I, I was given a weapon and told, this is it, this is for real. It doesn't matter. I know you're not, you know, you're not, it doesn't matter about Aryan or not. You're a white dude and you're going to die or you're going to kill. So get ready. And I was like, okay. The second I see somebody try to stab somebody, I'm throwing this knife straight in that trash can, and I'm running right into that cop's office, and I'm diving under his desk, and I'm going to beg for him to put me in the shoe. I'm going to say, please, for the love of God, get me away from these maniacs. Because I'm not dying, and, and I'm not killing over this funky TV that I don't even watch when I've got two years left. Y'all can all right. suck a whole pool of dicks. I'm not killing anybody over Yo, that stupid TV. I was just like, bro, I'm literally a weekend away from getting out of this place. Like, yeah, yeah, like don't give me. Like, I'm no. kill, I don't even watch TV, bro. They're crazy. So, like, <laughs> no, I, I didn't get. I didn't. Thankfully, man, I didn't have to join the gang. Now that's the closest time that anything like that ever happened to popping off. And my big thing was, man, even though I had to, of course, respect the rules of where I sit in the cafeteria, that's like a a, a hard rule. That's like you don't sit over there, or half the prison's not gonna fuck with me anymore. I'm sitting over here on my side. Everybody fucks with me. I go over there I automatically, you know, uh, half the people are never going to talk to me again. So I, I reminded rules like that. I had a black dude in my band, Garfield. He's been on the podcast that I used to do. He's been on multiple times now. He's out now. He's my drummer for years. He's black and a Muslim. We're really not supposed to be that tight. You know, he kind of got in trouble and got chewed out a little bit for being one of my best friends. And to this day, I've got his phone number and he called me yesterday to tell me happy birthday, you know? Um, that's nice, dude. It just, it really depends. You know, he's, he wasn't supposed to mess with me like that, but it, he and I saw something in each other. And I know, man, I learned the power of friendship in there. So I know yeah. lots of dudes like to say shit like, oh, gay or whatever. But bro, friendship got me through that shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Having homies yeah. in there and playing music with these dudes and building a bond with them got me through it. I couldn't have done it by myself, man. I'm telling you. I'm not a big believer in like self made man. I had homies. Hey, it's, it's like, it's like you said, it's, it sounds like it's all fucking ego in there. It's, you know, it's stupid. It, it like, yeah. If you want to live, if you want to live your life not having friends and like, you know, that's just a, in my opinion, a sad way to live. It is what yeah. it is. But if we can go back real quick, I'm a bit curious. Like, your friend who had the uh, the swastika tattoo, like, I'm just thinking, like, what was that guy like? Because I can't imagine that he was physically forced to have the tattoo. But it must have been like a almost like a a, a people threat, per. Yeah. I'm guessing like a people person thing. Right. I've already frozen on the webcam, by the way. Yeah, 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 froze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mouth is open for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <my. laughs> I was trying to take a screenshot for the like, thumbnail like, coming up. How did that? How did that even happen, bro? Like, was he for? I can't imagine he was physically forced because then it's like, well, why would they want to have somebody in the gang who's like being forced to be in there in the first place? So sure. he must have willingly got it. But at sure. the same time, it's like, is he like a people pleaser? Is it kind of like? But was he just trying to like be friendly with people? Like, because it does seem fucking extreme. You know what it I mean? Extreme. Like, yeah. Nah, it seemed no, like so. he was like, threatened, not, right? He must have been threatened. Not, right? No, Basically. nobody. No, the, all right. Well, you can tell us. But what what I will say is like that also would make him a target to people that don't like that shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he, so was it, he weak and he caved? I see what you're saying. Like, how do they yeah. how do they work that out? So, I don't know a ton about the intricacies of their you know recruitment. I know that they will do what they call scouting, which is a term we know, I guess, um, where they make sure that, you know, somebody that they think is a good fit for the gang, his, his conduct, you know, matches what they believe that a solid man's conduct should be and all this, you know, blah, blah, blah. And ultimately, once they decide that he is good enough for their purity gang or whatever, um, they have to go on a mission. And I'm, I don't even know how much of this is like hidden or secret knowledge. I mean, I'm sure you probably find this out in some documentary somewhere. So sorry if any ex-cons think I'm snitching, um, which basically means you have to hurt somebody. 
It means you have to perform violence, heinous act of violence, in order to earn the right to get that tattoo and join the gang. Anytime that you see those tattoos, they did something horrible to get it. It is a badge. It's a patch. They have to earn that. And they have to be able to verify when they go to another prison what they did to get it. It has to be known. You got what I'm saying? You can't just show up with that tattoo on you and say, yeah, I did this at this joint. You're going to have to have, some of them even have it on paper that they sneak through their paperwork, like legitimate official, like Aryan Nation, Aryan Brotherhood fucking regalia for the gang that they're in to prove the, the work that they did to get this stuff. So more or less what more than likely happened, you know, is he got off the bus there, was probably quite rapidly approached by the white dudes and was told, listen, hey, man, this is how it gets down. You know, we're going to need that paperwork. You have to show us what you're in here for, you know, and this, that, and the other. And uh, you're with us or you're against us, you know? Who, who are you? Are you riding with us or are you against us? Because this is an Aryan Nation yard. Every single white dude here is Aryan Nation. It's you versus us or what? What's up? You know, and it's like, it's not necessarily, I don't think, considered, because they consider that to invite you even to be, you know, um, something to brag about, something a big deal. They think you're dumber to refuse, of course, not only because of your ultimate violence by death, because the thing is, like I just said, they have to put in a mission to get that patch, right? So they need a non-ending source of people who are not joining the gang. So it's not really a direct threat so much as it is you're going to get this protection by hurting somebody else or you're going to be one of the hurt. You have to hurt or be hurt, basically. Join our gang by hurting one of the guys that's not us, be the guy that's not us, and get hurt. So, I mean, ultimately, you know. So you think he was basically put in that position? It wasn't like a... Like, he, he was pretty much forced to make that decision, either be against us or be with us. Like, I, I guess my only follow-up question to that is, does that mean that everybody who's in the, the Aryan clan or team or whatever it is, um, are, do they all have tattoos then? It, like, without any exceptions, they all have, like, swastika yeah. tattoos. Mm -hmm. Or lightning bolts, or both, depending. The lightning bolts, like the SS, like you see the Nazis had, you know, the, I don't remember what the SS stands for. What, what's the lightning stand for? It's the lightning bolts. Hitler's, uh, the SS... You know what I'm talking about? The SS, yeah, the I Nazis. Know, I know what you're I'm talking about. Oh, 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 and, oh, I'm sorry. So, you know. No, no, it's all good. Um, so the lightning bolts actually differ by state, believe it or not. I recently found out, right before I got out, I found out that the lightning bolts, some of them look kind of funny. Some of them are pointed at the bottom. Some of them are outlined and not filled in. Harry Potter, bro. Pretty much a dark mark, more or less. Um, <laughs> but um, I think that it, um, I'm pretty sure that deals with what state and sometimes specifically what game, because keep in mind now that these dudes are rivals, but they have a lot of the same patches, like an Aryan nation and Aryan brotherhood, both got a swastika on them. They don't know how to, you know, which swastika is that, you know, who, whose side are you on exactly? Cause they're at war with each other. So other things like certain shields and phrases and stuff like that will indicate which one they're actually in. Um, to the best of my knowledge, both of them require work. You know, if you want the Swazi or you want the SS, you got to have work for both of them. And a lot of times the high ranking ones get the SS on their neck because they're like, I've dedicated my life fully and wholeheartedly to prison. So <laughs> might as well just go ahead and get this tattooed on my neck where this is going to mean something forever. Bro, that's fucking crazy, man. Like, holy shit. You, you want to talk about people that need to be in that fucking mental asylum? Like, bro, those dudes sound fucking cranked. Oh, and by the way, you also asked what Brian was like, man. He was a very intelligent and deep guy, believe it or not. I know that sounds crazy, and I want everybody to know that I'm not uplifting any form of Nazi ideology because this guy starkly stood against it. But he is a, a shining example in my mind of what it could have been like for me. And yeah. how lucky I really am that I didn't wind up at a place where I had to make that choice, man. Because as much as I like to sit around and say, I would never get a swastika tattooed on my body, his exact words were, don't judge me, bro. You cannot fucking judge me because you didn't get off that bus at that, at that pen like I did. <laughs> you yeah. got off the bus at a medium security with two wires. I got off the bus at a pen with 10 wires. So I hold up two fingers. In <laughs> yeah, man, I can, I can like kind of imagine how something like that could fucking happen. But like, bro, that makes me think like, shit, dude, like, I know that it sucks you having to go there and all, but like, do you feel like you got kind of lucky in some ways that you didn't end up in like a high security? Because if you did, the same shit could have happened to you. If I wouldn't have pled guilty, I would have gone to a penitentiary. Crazy to think about. I was one designation point away from going to a high security. I was one designation point because I was in the youngest age bracket. I had my GED, I had a violent crime, all this stuff that affects what security level you go to. I had the worst in each category. And the last thing basically that I could have had was acceptance of responsibility, which means that I pled guilty and they took two points down and it let me go to a medium security. And yeah, things would have gone a lot differently had I gone to a high security. I don't know. Um, I probably would be mortally wounded and it would have gotten mortally wounded in there just for who I am. You know, I'm not, I don't think I'm cut out for that. I can handle myself fine in prison and jail and all that, but high security is a different breed of man. Those are monsters in there, man. Yeah. I can handle myself around average criminals, not maniacs. It's weird that they force people to go there and then those people have to defend themselves, right? Like yep. you like people go to prison for heinous acts or violence or crimes and then 
they go into an environment where that's almost rewarded. Yeah. Which it's a government facility. They oversee all of that shit. It's like, why would that be the main thing that they have to overcome when they're trying to yeah. get rid of that? Yeah, you know? like, think about it. You, you want to put a cop murderer in prison, that's like he's hero of the village on Minecraft, and he gets to the village, you know, and everybody's throwing him presents and shit like that. It's an anti-society. You're not making them better by putting them with no. other people like them, you know? It, yeah. that's, that's a really interesting yeah, like, a thought process, right? It, it's like, I think it probably comes down to the fact of a few things. Like, it's probably, A, either incredibly expensive to take somebody who is a criminal and, you know, reform them into a uh, positive member of society, and two, it's like, it might not even be possible. So I, I guess their third solution is, you know what, we're just going to take these people who we can't have out in public because they're causing crimes and just lock them up together. And it's survival of the fittest. We don't really shit at that point. They just have to fight it out. They come out after a sentence and hopefully they don't commit again. Like, there is yet another factor at play, though, that is important. Another factor, alongside what you said, another factor with that is the profitability of continuing to have them return to prison and be in prison for long periods of time. In America, we've got prison privatization. Um, you know, in Sweden and Norway, you know, they got sweet prisons. They let their dudes out on the weekend. You got video games. Their recidivism rate is like 25% to 20%. One, one fifth to one quarter of men in prison in, in Norway or Sweden, I think it was Norway, have been before we'll be back. We're at 91% in America with worse prisons. So that doesn't make sense if you think about it. How come in their country, most people who go to prison never go back again. They're like, yo, this sucks. Fuck this. And they've got balanced meals. They've got gyms, personal video games. They get to go home and fuck their wives on the weekend. Like, and they are like, this sucks, bro. Fuck yeah. prison. And they never go back. But here in America, we have violent prisons with, that are so, underfunded, no air conditioning, no food. And, and yeah. yet people just keep coming back. It doesn't make sense. There has to I, be something else at play. I, mm -hmm. I actually, I went to Norway uh, earlier this year. Uh, one of my... He started off with a, a viewer of mine in my Twitch chat. We became really good friends. And then I literally went out there and spent the fucking week in Norway with him, his family. Hey, it, was, it was amazing. I absolutely loved it. Um, it was honestly like one of the best experiences of my life. Like it was fantastic and Norway's beautiful. Uh, and yeah. something I learned while I was over there is like, bro, they are on a different level, these Norwegians, dude. I'm not even kidding. Like their country, firstly, is fucking beautiful. Um, they're they're just so like like compared to the UK they're just so far ahead like you're talking like twenty maybe even thirty years for fucking everything everything is like more futuristic makes more sense it's like everything's in place and, and like my friend he was telling me he was saying that here in Norway uh, they have something uh, what do you call it I think it was called like doctorin sickness is what they call it um, and it was basically like a joke how everybody in Norway had a uh, university degree to like a doctorin level or whatever it's called. Forgive me, I didn't go to university. Doctor. Because out in, the, out in Norway, you get fucking paid to go to school. Like you don't even have to, you're literally paid. It's like, so you have, he said to me, he said, you've got these opportunities, right? He, he's like, so firstly, you can go to uni and they will literally pay for it for you. Uh, and you will be paid to go, right? And if that might be a little bit of a, slight exaggeration but you can correct me any norwegians watching the podcast and it's like if you don't want to do that that's fine because you can get yourself like a trade or do something else or if you really don't know what to do you can go and do like you'll go to like a college where they teach you like outward bound survival and shit where you go out into the fucking wilderness and like you learn how to survive and shit like that it's like damn it's, it's like no wonder people aren't out here committing so many crimes it's like you guys are just you fucking like gaming IRL, like you've just got it <laughs> pretty sorted. Like it seems, weird, you know. I I don't know. I I feel like um, I I feel like once you fall into uh poverty, I I think it's very difficult to pull yourself out for a lot of people. Yeah. I I think that it just kind of compounds and you know things can spiral, but that's a bit of a different subject. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, the United States is just uh very diverse and uh you know that i think we have a crazy history right it's like you know it's a pretty, pretty violent history throughout and uh i mean it's, it's got a, a lot war. more peaceful yeah ironically but, um, our forefathers fled exactly what happened to me yeah <laughs> over prosecutorial and uh yeah. over tyrannical like a tyrannical government you know that <laughs> pretty much you know the whole founding of america was to escape that kind of shit now one of our founding fathers i probably said this last time on the podcast because i say it on almost every podcast one of the founding fathers, don't remember which one, 
said he hoped that there'd be a revolution every 50 to 100 years. He <laughs> said, too. he said, because they still had England fresh in their mind. No offense, of course, Mr. Rexy, to, you know, the, yeah, yeah, don't worry, still it's the, your ancestors. They still had the king over there on their mind, and they said, you know what, man? Governments cannot go several hundred years without being overthrown, or else they get corrupt, and they get paranoid, and they get overzealous, and tyrannical, and, and, and corrupt from the ground up. That's what one of the founding fathers said. Here we are well, a couple I'm hundred sure years he later. Had, you know, he had quite the PTSD, so he's he wasn't going to, like, see any other option, right? <laughs> right, yeah, he was like, no dictators ever. <laughs> you know? We're never doing this again. What's this? <laughs> Like I have yeah. PTSD. no shit. no i mean i'm sure they had i mean that's, yeah, fucking, uh, yeah they did they had some bro imagine probably. like imagine literally <laughs> floating in the ocean for like weeks on end this you, yeah, you don't even well, know if you're gonna make it there dude and then people dying well, every day just being on the boat you're sailing just like, back you know today what? is like modern day astronauts bro <laughs> yeah. just going yeah. out exploring maybe it was, not it coming was, back bro it was that bad for them they would literally go to a place that they didn't even know existed for sure like yeah, how do you even know that was the boat <laughs> like, <laughs> how do you even know that shit was real and then like but, you're halfway there and people half your people are dead in your boat you're like you know what fuck that i still rather go to this place i don't even know if it's there, by the way <laughs> the I new world go. <laughs> yeah we're going it's to the new world dream, everybody dude. it's crazy oh, the world's round we're so, just gonna cut out in the other direction because the world's round all right nuts that's, that's, that's my history here my history here is a little bit foggy but I wasn't under the impression that we all went, and I'm saying we, I mean like the, us. Yeah, the pilgrims, it, man. I, I, I don't recall us going to America to escape anything, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, we, no, that, it was, really yeah. Know, we too much about this shit, to be honest. We, we no, did oh, more terrible back then. It was for like, you mean, like religious story. freedom and things like that. You religious know? freedom. The Church of England apparently was extremely tyrannical, which is what led most of the early Puritans. Um, and yeah, uh, what are they the called? Rams. The first Protestants. The first Protestants yeah. that were fleeing the Church of England, um, which is why America was founded with separation of religion. You know, separation of church and state was with that fresh on the mind. Um, yeah. yeah. Yep. As far as the actual like diehard tyranny of it, I don't think that it was too severe for the pilgrims. I was just under the impression that it was mostly a religious freedom issue that led them to want to come to the New World to help found it uh, because of Church England. Yeah. Somebody in the comments is going to be like, actually. Yeah, there's the, the <laughs> separate time frame. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting. I need to look into this because I'd like to know myself. I'll tell you what is interesting that I find interesting is um, when I went out to America, this was like five, six years ago, when I lived out in California for a little bit. And I couldn't fucking believe like the churches, man. Like these churches were like gigantic. You, like, yeah. Like I was just like, damn. I was like, they fucking care about going to church. Like here in the UK, it's like it, it, you don't do it. Like it, yo, it just, yo, the race seat, it's just not, To be fair, thing, to, to like, be fair, churches, it's like, people. Are, people are like converting churches into houses now. Yeah. Like people don't go to church, and if they do. It, it's usually like fucking Betty that goes on a Sunday and she's like the only person that turns up. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's, it's happening crazy. here too, to be honest. Like the, the whole like, you know, percentage of people that even go to church, like it, it's dropping, you know, even here. But like, yeah, they've yeah. had a lot of years before then to build up, right? All these different, like, I guess you can call them enterprises. But but also, yeah, I know why you're confused. It's because like, you you know, first we're talking about like the... The, you know the old presidents right like the people that participated in the revolutionary war that was like way after the the, the immigrants mm -hmm. like the puritans and stuff that was way oh, after. totally different time frame yeah, yeah it was a completely different Boston time frame. tea party yeah. was not related to why yeah. they left in the first place yeah, that yeah, was yeah. just like later yeah much later yeah. like like 100 plus years like later it, probably like at least yeah at least 100 years i think between the first guys and what was that what the hell was that first colony that just straight up disappeared was it roanoke yeah, yeah one like, colony, uh, that bitch yeah. is just gone. Yeah, one boy yeah. went home to go get some more supplies and came back, and everybody was gone. I think it's it something like, to do with like probably the Indians because they, you know, they dissed the Indians hard. Apparently, like yeah. in America, yeah. before yeah. we actually came out, they would just constantly battle each other, dude. It was like a war ground scout. Yeah, because they were hurting. basically they trying to take over their land. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's hard. Native tribes, yeah. yeah. No, I'm saying they were fighting each other before. Oh, that too. There, yeah, right? yeah, they were fighting yeah, for each other, and then third party came in, like, "Hey, I got some diseases. Y'all want some?" Yeah. Like, ah! third party comes over here, like, "Hey, you guys heard of immune systems? <laughs> Everybody's dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. nerds get wrecked. It's like I got some bubonic diseases. on me. Y'all want some? You know, and that and it was GG, bro. I don't know if it was bubonic stuff, but they had, you know, they had. This is gonna be so random, but I actually just looked up the other day why we had so many diseases when we arrived with the Native Americans, and they didn't give us any in return. I was looking it up, and it's because we had domesticated animals. 
and the virus is oh, distorted right. to us. And that's what yeah. that's what the big difference was. They didn't really have domesticated animals. They were more into agriculture. But since we had all these diseases so that they, morphed they over from cows and animals, pigs. Right? They were more like animal worshippers rather than like, hey, you're my pet now. Come here. You know, give me a hug. You know what I mean? Or at least hunter-gatherers or like yeah. hunters more than like domesticators. You know, yeah, they, they yeah. would just go catch it and eat it. And so they didn't really have the exposure time to yeah. barely humans over centuries of domesticating animals. You know, it's kind of like swine flu really more from pigs to us. Yeah, really yeah, because I was wondering, really I was like, point. surely they coughed on us and we died too, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm, this was a mutual yeah. cough, right? But nope, <laughs> turns out it was one way because we had gnarly diseases from animals because Europe, European cities were all small and cramped and high populations and lots of farm animals and germs, you know, and they were they living on open American enough, plains. You know, they already died yeah, enough. Yeah, our souls that. were already dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they died enough times in the past that they're like, I built some immune systems already, basically. Damn, that's crazy, dude. Wait, what? What topic are we on, real yeah, quick? Nah. I'm just yo, we, need, like, we need to get back to the Josh Ruski topic, bro. Yo, yo, we need to get back to the Josh Ruski <laughs> topic first, dude. I don't want to start, you know, going deep on some yo, stuff. Yo, yo, bro. Anyways, I saw you were making that Guthix video. Okay, after an hour and forty yeah. minutes, we're we're doing some Runescape talk. But hey, it's hey. Okay, you know, you, you guys already know Josh, so it's like you know, you're you're interested to hear all about all this other shit. But yeah, what's what's yeah. good with that? You know, what's the um. I guess what's yeah, the inspiration, so, you know? The the Gods of Gilanor thing that I want to do, um, I just released first episode, what he's talking about on my other, not my main real life YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, The RS Fell, and I did a video about the history and lore of Guthix. It is um, modified, or not necessarily modified, I guess, but kind of cuts off at the perspective of old school. Um, the inspiration for it, hell, I don't really remember, man. I legitimately think I just went down a rabbit hole on the RuneScape 3 wiki. Um, yeah. Maybe it was even on our wiki at first. I can't remember exactly what kicked off this interest, but um, my original plan was to do a series about the quest, and I still plan to do that. So I was kind of looking at the bigger picture here. Um, I'm planning on two actual series on my channel. I'm having a UIM, um, and I'm also, well, not really a series, I guess, and I'll be doing PK videos on my peer. The UIM will be a long, an ongoing series of a, account progression, and I'll have random PK videos. But also, in the meantime, in my spare time, Gods of Gilanor. So the next one's going to be Sarah Dolman. I wanted to kind of lay the story, tell the stories of Guthix, which is an insane story. For those who don't know, the, the lore of Guthix is an incredible story. I mean, it is like anime type shit, like betrayal yeah, and accidental much. ascension to right. godhood. It's, it's intense, man. It's yeah. a wild story. Uh, Sarah Dolman is involved in it. Sarah Dolman dominated Guthix's people for a long time before Guthix was a god, even though Guthix is more powerful. It's a crazy story. Um, so next, I want to do Sarah Dolman. Originally, it all started with I want to do highly cinematic RuneScape quest stories. Because we all hold space bar through them. And I think the stories are incredible. Like the story of Desert Treasure, the story of Dragon Slayer 2, they're incredible stories, man. But we all hold space bar through them, you know, and miss out on the lore. And I think if they were presented in a more uh, storytelling way, it's more palatable, you know, especially for people who like to put something on the second monitor and AFK it. Um, and the way that the only way that I see to do a quest series is to start with the gods. Because most of the quests, especially if I want to do Desert Treasure, has got to, I have to disguise, you got to know who Zeros is. You know, Desert Treasure is all about Zeros and Zami betraying him once he got the staff of Armadil which is a crazy story, and this lore is very much overlooked by us. Now, the challenge that I had, as I said, is that RuneScape, as we, a lot of us know, main game is in the Sixth Age. They have had new quests where Guthix dies. You know, they're in Sixth Age, and Old School takes place in the Fifth Age. So I kind of have to do some, like, guessing and, like, pinching the storyline clothes in case they ever do something in Old School with the story. is different. Um, but, yeah, I'm pretty much just stopping RuneScape 3 lore for old school and kind of, imply, you know, adding our context. Like, Song of the Elves kind of has a little bit of a different backstory of Saren. Got to do a video about Saren because she is a goddess um, discovered by Guthix in her own realm with the elves way before Gilanor was discovered. It's a really wild story, man. And he uh, ended up convincing Saren to come live with him in Gilanor and bring her elves, and it was all good and all copacetic until the God Wars. And then he said, all the gods got to get out. And that's why Saren, you know, fractured herself in Song of the Elves is to try and subvert the Guthixian edicts. It's just an insane story, man. It's absolutely beautiful. And um, yeah, it sounds cool. And you're right. So what what are you planning on doing? Making like a video series of this? Or yeah, so I've already done one. It's the Guthix, the, the, the story of Guthix, like his lore and his background and everything. It's like a 20 minute long video. And it's, man, I'm talking about, you wouldn't know it because it's only 20 minutes, but it's probably like 40 or 50 hours of editing, man. Like I did all kinds of animations and fades and keyframes out the yin yang and I'm, music and sound effects man i tried to make it very i wanted it to be a video that you can watch and enjoy or you can put it on your second monitor while you're playing runescape and listen to it and it's yeah. still really engaging you know oh bro um, I, I love lore man i i dude, link it to us or we'll link it down below in the video and also i'd like to watch it myself uh sure. josh have you ever like you seem like a respectable man have you heard of a uh game called warhammer 40k i don't think i think i've heard of it yeah oh dude I just like talking about lore, the lore in Warhammer 40k. I don't know if uh, Mint or Rice Cup even know what that is. 
it, it, it's, it's more, a game. Yeah. It's bigger here in the UK. It's a tabletop game. A tabletop game, yeah. You oh. Get, like, little figures you pay like Monopoly. Like, no, you have to do it yourself. A little bit like Monopoly, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, That's but the, the lore, the universe on Warhammer 40k, it's so fucking deep and it's so interesting. I'm yeah. not even joking when I tell you this. I I probably listen to about an hour a day of just straight lore about it and have Damn, done son. Because it's so fucking book, bro. Day two oh, of I, uh, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, like you know what, I, Josh, I actually think you'd probably like it if you have the time between being a fucking a husband and a, a father and a content creator. Like if you ever get the chance to listen to some of this shit, it's wild. Like I, I'm telling you, it's just so fascinating. It, it's effectively, a mile, yeah. it, it's like the human race, but it's supposed to be forty thousand years into the future, and, and there are like fucking chaos gods in it there's an emperor who's like pr pretty much a god and everybody has like these massive fucking armor suits and shit and like it's That's just sick. like it, it's so so fucking good bro, the lore is deep but i don't know what what you can't even explain it brother you just got suits what's there's, going on there's, bro there's too much there's too, you give us a one minute summer you listen to shit for conflict? an hour a day yeah, i could conflict. explain oh, yeah. section four on their armor or what what do we got going on here yeah bro yeah, what they fight off diseases or what or oh, let's do an hour of lower day they got robots that's it dude <laughs> wait yeah what's the conflict who are they fighting you know <laughs> they're, they're, literally they're they're fighting uh xenos which are aliens. sounds like some or, fucking and, and they, 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 shit. they gotta shit fight aliens down the xenos bro Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's like a bunch of, like so right here. This is this is something I got my buddy for Christmas. This is Magic the uh, Gathering hammer. Like, <laughs> oh, cool! The collab uh, deck. This dude right here is called a Tyranid. This, this is like one of the aliens. Um, He's expanding there, beyond Pokemon. There's mm -hmm. Chaos Gods, which are effectively like demons, and they they live in effectively a place called the Warp, which is like it's like another realm, but they occasionally like seep into the real world and shit. Peekaboo. It's just fucking awesome. when you say the real world dude does it have like wi-fi like mcdonald's dude, what 40, are we years, about, 40, years in the future you have mcdonald's and wi-fi together so like uh earth and a lot of other like human infested cities are called hive it. and it's literally just like layer upon layer into earth of like just people oh, and the freaky. further the further you get down the more fucked up it is and there's just too many people and like the the normal consumption for a human on a daily basis is eating something which is it, it's effect, effectively like humans that have died and then it's put into like spam in a can and that's like their go to eat like that's what they eat on Ooh. a daily basis because it's either eat that or die that it's, human disease damn it's a really Dude. morbid time I'm, not I'm glad I'm living now but, but, but this is this is the thing <laughs> so the the space marines are partic they're they're basically like they're shown as being like the good guys but, bro, are they really the fucking good guys? These dudes are fucked. Like, I, like they, they, they wouldn't think twice about just, like, killing thousands of people because it just doesn't mean anything to them. It's just, like, the mission. And they're all... Oh, dude. So there's, like, a secret <laughs> mission. Oh, right. There's, like, a, there's, like, a oh, very dude. obvious conflict, but then there's, like, these secret conflicts where the good guys are actually kind of, like, the bad guys. You know what we're saying? You know, everyone's so bad. bad. Everyone's eating humans. They're all so, bad. So Basically, there's there's a dude there's a dude called the Emperor. Okay, this guy is the, the father of mankind, and there there's so many like arcs to this. Re, you'd fucking love this. Uh, it sounds it. cool. Re's looking it up right now. Look at him. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, dude, my hands are free. My hands are free. After we finish the podcast, I'm gonna send you guys a video that was made like a fan made video, and you just gotta watch it. It's if you like sci fi shit or if you like fantasy, you'll love this. It's yeah. It's I know. I've been I've been listening to a lot of fantasy dudes on audiobooks so but yeah there's there's a dude called the emperor of mankind and um mm. like effectively he people worship him right everything that he's ever done has been almost like a godly thing and and like people see him differently like people don't know what his true form is and stuff like that but at this point in time like in the warhammer lore the the dude is alive but he's being kept alive by sacrificing like a thousand uh i think it's a thousand psychers a day so like bikers <laughs> so a psyker is effectively like it could be anybody and they they basically have like uh like almost like magic abilities right they, they have like a gift 
And the only way that he's being kept alive is there's like a thousand of them every single day that are shipped to fucking Terra and they're shipped to where he is and they just get drained of life in like the most painful, just horrible way. And that keeps him alive. But he, when I say he's alive, I mean like he's not doing shit. Like he's just fucking, just, he's like a corpse. Like early Voldemort type deal. He's just early yes. Voldemort. Dude, it's, it's fucked. And then there's like chaos gods. There's like fucking, there's like a god of like lust. Uh, and like you know, it's this fucking. Tell like, us a little about that one. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, damn, there's a lot. There's a lot of. Uh, there, there, there. There's there's so much. There's a uh, the chaos god Corn, who is like the god of just war, uh, and he just fucking you know it's just like murdering. It's very dark. It's gruesome as fuck. It's awesome. Uh, what yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave gonna that happen, Honestly, in forty thousand years, I'm sure there's gonna be some corpse looking. In, so in forty thousand sure. years, so. people become more degenerate. You know, sounds like it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is the Wi Fi good? Dude, it's, it's so interesting, like, listening to it. I doubt it's it. like, it's like basically every single person who is like just a human on one of the hive worlds, it's like you will have absolutely zero idea, concept of anything. You would have never seen a space marine, right? Whereas, like, in the actual game itself, it's like these are the fucking dudes, these are the guys in the space suits that are awesome, the lore is insane. Uh, there's like there, there's certain um space marines that are so secretive it's like no human has ever seen them because if a human ever sees them they just straight up kill them like they have to just be unknown and like they're out there specifically to fight the fucking um the demons and like they're they're like genetically enhanced like they've been given all of the fucking like every kind of drug imaginable is like a baby and then they formed into like these super fucking soldiers that are like nine foot tall and these are just the regular space marines and then above the space marines is then you get like the primarchs the primarchs are like the fucking leaders and these dudes are like 12 foot plus and then the fucking god emperor is like 20 foot plus <laughs> like, just... yeah. wait the space emperor is that a different emperor <laughs> no no the emperor of my... dude it's, yeah. ju it's just amazing but honestly like anybody listening to me is rambling he... about this you guys know back me up in the comments this shit is so fucking in depth like, yeah. Sounds like I, Doom and Red Rising mixed together. It sounds pretty cool. I've been I've been listening to hours of this every single day for months. I can tell. And I've just touched the surface. <laughs> like I've just touched the. Rexy's like, surface. how do I explain this? Next podcast, Rexy talks for two hours on lore of Warcraft, bro. Lore like, no, no, no Warhammer, dude. We'll make our own. Now, bro. I I love these like little talks. I love hearing Rexy talk about his passionate stuff here. But I do want to cover some of this new RuneScape stuff. And I get Josh's opinion, man. We'll start yeah. I get, I, thrown at the very end of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, we should, we'll we'll it. It. I don't know. What do you uh, What do you think about the XP from Master Quest and just dumping it on people in the chest, bro? You like that, or what's your opinions on it? I mean, I guess you know. If uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was indifferent. I, yeah, I like XP. So I mean, I have personally always felt it's gonna sound funny, man, but I have always felt that quest rewards are like weak for XP. Mm -hmm. I've always thought that. Um, I didn't necessarily feel like they needed to be changed, I wouldn't say. Um, I'm not upset about it. I'm pretty neutral on it, man. I mean, like, if they want to increase the XP rewards, you know, that makes sense to me because they were always pretty shitty, and it doesn't make sense for you to not retroactively get them. So, overall, I'll give it my seal of approval. I think I voted yes on it, so, you know. I like that they went to game collect it afterwards, you know. I was like, okay, yeah. so no one I else refused gets it, to and collect I got 170,000. <laughs> Legends Guild was popping, dude. There were so many people at the Legends Guild. When I went in there, I was like, you couldn't oh, yeah. even move. Radimus Urkel was completely overwhelmed. You, you know what? The update dropped on my Fresh Start uh, account literally as I'm doing 70 agility grind, which, you know, getting 70 agility, it sucks. Like, it's so slow, it takes hours. Yeah. I got pretty much 200,000 agility XP oh for free. And I'm just there like, oh my god, Jagex, like, you fucking Thank you. goats. Thank you. so. You just, you just literally just saved me like five or six hours. Do you know what I'm I mean? I'm not going like, to lie. There was a bigger one that was that affected me honestly, and that was that two days before that update, I said, you know what, I want a dragon scimitar on my one defense pure, and I said, I'm sure it will be months before they let us go back to Ape Atoll, but I'm gonna go ahead and get my scimitar, and I'll be damned, boys. Forty eight hours later, I'm back at the Ape Atoll. Sorry, man, I was super hyped about that. I logged on and opened up the fucking I opened up the subreddit or something, and I saw that you know I went to the news post, and I was like, yes, man, I just did this quest two days ago. So like a nightmare is on my streak level. I was hyped about that one, man. I'm very, very glad. I think that was a good integrity change. I'm glad they did not pull it. 
And I had an argument with this not too long ago because I'm also an Iron Man. I prefer Iron Man mode, as most people know, but I love all aspects of the game. I have yet to find a way to play RuneScape that I don't enjoy, and I like to try out new ones. And I will say that, um, oh, hell, what was I originally going to say? <laughs> Something about your Oh, yeah, I was going to say about the integrity change, right? The fact that they also said that integrity change, not voting on it, taking the dragon pickaxe out of the wilderness. I said, if you supported one, you need to support the other, in my opinion. And I had an, a Twitter argument about this because I said, the thing about this is they're both nonsensical bullshits that are restrictions for accounts that, yes, admittedly, both of these account styles chose to restrict themselves. I get that, you know, fully get that. As a one defense peer, you knew going in that once you finish Monkey Madness, you can't go back to the Apatol, you know, but it's just kind of pointless. Similar to the way that they know that the, the wilderness rejuvenation didn't work with bait and prey now the new stuff looks like i'm gonna be all up in there on my iron man so i'm gonna lose a lot of money with the new wilderness updates but i like to see integrity changes like that because you will never get enough players to agree to take the dragon pickaxe out of the wilderness and you will never get enough players damn sure not get enough players to agree to let one defense peers go back to the ape hole so i thought it was very balanced of them to pull neither one both what could almost i'm not going to say pvp update somebody will shoot me but something that was a beneficial update for pkers not, if not a PvP update in and of itself. And also yeah. one that was for Iron Man that's just integrity. I liked it, man. That was good integrity. Something that doesn't make sense yeah. and isn't fair. It gets I, I changed feel, without our yeah. word. I, I feel like what what is the downside to allowing... Like, how could letting Pures go back to Apatol like, ruin your experience? And the I don't know part. who's for that. Like, okay. who's taking that stand? They're like, every I don't day, think anybody was. Oh, now it was just <laughs> I don't think so. I don't I think guess I never met an Iron Man that said, don't let him go back. Actually, no, I did meet one. He's actually a friend of mine, and he said, <laughs> and he's an Iron Man, and he said, well, the one defense peer chose to play restricted, and that's a restriction that's existed since 2005 or something like that. I was like, bro, stop, man. Stop, dude. This is why they vote no on your shit, too, bro. You're not helping, man. Yeah. The head you know, actually yeah. told it. Yeah. Well, I, I think that people need to get into like a, a more open mentality with that, where it's like, look, if this isn't going to benefit you, doesn't mean that you say no but i think that you're right i think like with something yeah. so niche as allowing pure accounts which is a tiny percentage of the player base in the first place letting them back into apis hole you're right there's not enough people to make that pass by 75 percent. and i think that no. the general mentality for a lot of people probably is if it's not going to benefit me i don't want it but like that's yeah. just that's selfish in my opinion do you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's like I, I vote for shit that i'm never gonna do and I'm Me just too. like, I'm voting yes because I know that there's a group of people that are going to enjoy this content. And if they enjoy the content, I'm happy. And I admit that I trust Jagex to flesh it out further down the road if it's not correct, you know. And I'm, I have great faith in not only the rearrangement of the polling system, but also in the direction that Jagex goes. So, I as far as I'm concerned. what they're doing now. Lately, just seeing some of the stuff they're doing and putting yeah. stuff into the game, bro. It's nice. It's nice to see I, some yeah. control I uh, over what we want to see. I think that with the increased XP rewards, I am kind of the same as you, Josh. Like, I don't really care. It's like, I, I think it's nice that they did allow people that have done the quest to regain the XP. My yeah. bias is obviously I needed that XP at the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's a big one. But at the same time, oh, when, I really, when I really think about it, it's like, if they want to increase the XP that you get from quests, I think that's a good thing. Because at the end of the day, it's like you can only complete that quest once so you get the xp once and a lot yeah, of sure. the time a lot of the time the xp is going to help you like potentially bypass or speed up the process of getting to the next level that you need to you know what i mean like so for example like take herblore it's like you get you you complete um the first quest and you get level 3 herblore right but like herblore, you can't think of the name can you right now <laughs> that's why you oh, skip the jungle name jungle potion <laughs> It was smooth, no, bro. No, Sorry, it was smooth. <laughs> Trying to gloss it over. It's struggle <laughs> <portion> <laughs> on. Yeah, that quest you get herbal from it. <laughs> it's all right. People get it. It's it's jungle potion. Jungle potion. Druidic <laughs> ritual into jungle potion. I said druidic ritual. Yeah, but to go back to it, yeah, I I don't really mind. I think it's fine. I think after speaking to my chat about this, actually, a lot of people were just saying like. A lot of the time, people just do quests as a means to an ends, and that ends is usually to get like Baru gloves or to unlock fucking ancient magics or something like that. And you know they, they say, but outside of that, there's not a real incentive. And like bear in mind, I'm talking to my chat. I'm talking to people who aren't end game players. Like a lot of people are just casual players or like they're mid game players. They're trying to pro like get through the game and stuff. 
and I think the general <sighs> feeling from my hmm. chat was like people wanted to have a bit more of a reward in terms of XP from these quests because it could basically speed up the process of getting to where they want to be, which is ultimately end game. And I think that you know there's definitely a fine line between making things too easy and just giving shit for free. But at the end of the day, I think that it would be okay purely from the stance that you can only complete a quest once. Yeah, it doesn't break meta or nothing. It, it's one, and what what is like? So if you get like sixty thousand agility XP from Monkey Madness Two instead of twenty k, which is what you get now, it's like, what is that in the grand scheme of things? Like if you're going for ninety nine agility, or if you're going for seventy agility, like it's literally nothing. Sometimes it, save you an hour or two, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But I, I don't have a problem with it. Just here's the mentality shift though. Like look how deep you're getting into you, like such a simple thing, but people take it so seriously. Like letting someone on an island, you're getting a little more experience. And we can literally break that down so niche pros and cons. And... Here, bro? Like, what the fuck? Right. Man, here's my, just here's, here's my take shit, on bro. it. Like, what is this? Yo, my take is a bit different. I prefer if they didn't do it. Because I just don't like the fact that they just gave people free XP, essentially, right? What they should have done is just add new content, actual content, that actually just makes skilling a bit faster, right? Like they do already. Right, with like smithing mini game and like rune crafting mini game, you know what I mean? Where people can actually do the content and actually just get a faster rate because you know that's already gonna happen, right? Eventually you'll get agility taught, you'll you'll know you'll get like I don't know herbal taught, you know what I mean? Eventually you're gonna get those things, right? I mean you literally have a rune crafting mini game now, which you could literally train to ninety nine. If not, you're also gonna get the best items to train rune crafting outside of the mini game. So you can I also prefer... do exclamation point KC rune toad and it works in rune light. Yeah, you call it yeah. rune toad. I, I, it shows I, you I prefer, <laughs> you know, rather than just giving people free XP, they just plan out their next actual content, which will inevitably give people faster XP rates, anyways. See, you know, because you know, it's I, I agree, dude. I yeah. like your stance, but to play but devil's yeah. advocate, like maybe we're just so. Um, well, people are just mentally... gonna say yes to everything, you know. But that we play RuneScape for right? for a so. job, you know. What I mean, like these skills are easy for us to train right like we we're just so embedded in the runescape like from an outside view if you do a master quest you should be like heavily rewarded right well but i mean to I, us, I, we're like, I, I, i'm why? saying like i feel like you already do get heavily rewarded you have permanent access to like the areas and the weapons and all that stuff you know? all big, big right? like I, i'm just saying it's like I, I don't understand why they are just giving away free shit now because like it's it old school RuneScape, that... my guy. You know, like I, I don't think like I, we came in. I, I signed into old school RuneScape just to be like, a year later, they're just like, hey, how about we just give you free XP? Yes or no? You know, like of course people are gonna. It definitely guys, felt. But... It definitely felt RuneScape main gamey. I, I can yeah, agree, it's just like it was know? like, bro, it's like that wasn't really RuneScape. Because like, like here's the thing, XP rates are gonna get faster, right? You're gonna. I prefer, like I said, they just bring out actual new content where people can actually participate in and spend their time doing. And knowing that they're gonna get faster XP, right? Because like eventually it's gonna happen. Like what this year? Yeah. Like last year they already did the smithing mini game and they did the room crafting mini game, which fundamentally made those two skills incredibly easier, right? Absolutely. Incredibly did. easier. So I'm just like, I, I I'm not gonna you know roast those because I at the end of the day it it got people really like playing the game and like really trying out the skills. But I think just yeah. giving away free XP is kind of like you know. It just kind of like incentivizes people to be like, "Hey, man, what's the next stimulus? You know, check like I. What's the like next one? You know, because I'm like, yo, check, man, I, I need more of that. Yo, you got you got another poll coming up because I'm trying to vote yes to that. You know, it's like I just don't like that mentality that they're trying to do now. It's like maybe it's one yeah. time only. Maybe they'll never look at it like they're fixing something that they think was broken more yeah, than just free XP. Yeah, you know? I just like hope if that if we did this quest today, we would have given this. Yeah, away. I'm just saying, dude. I just hope that they don't do that again because, like, I I think for, I don't I don't think free XP is necessarily a good thing. It should be more like them making actual content where people could you know could actually well, I do think in, that, in doing it. So. I think that moving forward, they're going to be buffing XP rewards in general with the new quest, but that was just them saying, we're going to make sure that all the old ones line up with what we're going to do in the future. You know? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, because I, I don't know, man. I just don't like... They're probably going to have way bigger XP rewards going yeah. forward, I would assume, after that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I just hope it's a one-time like, thing, bro, you know? and, and I would uh, assume it will be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah don't incentivize yeah. this, like, you know, free stuff, man, because they, if they keep doing that stuff, it's not good. Now, it's more than just free XP. There's also... Have you guys heard of the poison dynamite coming in the game? Yeah, I'm a little I've confused on that. Is that for HP peers? 
I can, I'll, let me just, I'll read it, read it from the blog here. So once assembled, simply place the poison dynamite on the ground and light it as you would a pile of locks. Deal damage in a three by three area for a precise attack. You can also stick the poison dynamite to your target. Um, after five ticks, the poison dynamite will explode, dealing zero to six damage. This will scale at your fire making level, which is weird. If this explosion hits, there's also huh. a 25% chance to poison the target. So it's pretty much for those who Low skillers I builds. think yeah, they call it like, like pure builds. skillers like it's a build yeah, like yeah. Pure he used 10 and 11 <laughs> hp iron man so we could get a granite mall he used to use the tick that, that's what it was i bet this is to fix that bug that thing they patched you remember you used to could like if you attack a monster on the same tick it spawned then you would not get xp for it remember yeah and, and i mean like used people that, used so to do, gargoyles or some yeah shit. people used mm -hmm. to do like level three you know level 10 fire capes things like that i'm i'm assuming it's for those kind of things well, Just I'm excited to see exactly what are people going to... I want to see if someone can, like, do it, like, those black chin bots who just light the fire by one of them, just wait for them to walk <laughs> over. Just, <laughs> yeah, you know? I think people are going to try like, some bossing with that shit at, like, low, super low you, bracket. Oh, that'd think? be crazy, right? Yeah. That'd be yeah. nuts. That's probably what they're doing. I, that's what I imagine they're doing. Because, like... I want to see what Rendy does, bro. Yeah. Rendy and Kim Q are going to come up with some crazy shit with this. Kim yeah. Q is going to, like, do Solus Adamas Part 2 and have straight 10 HP 99 strength Russian... <laughs> With yeah, like a Gmall on 10 HP. Yo, yeah, it's COA boss level 10, you know? <laughs> yeah. That'd be sick. All the transmog pet at level 10. I just 10. put all the bombs in the, you know, in this tile, and then I let it <laughs> blow, you know, and they die. It's like... <laughs> are, they, are they making it so you can attack uh, You can attack players with it? It sounds like... I don't even know. Players. I doubt it. Wait, this, nah, I, don't I, don't know. Even, I don't. I don't. Care. I know for a what fact they were not monsters. I think the intent was for monsters, but maybe they would let it for PKing or something. I mean, Probably it sounds like, like really hard. It sounds like really hard to kill someone with it, though. So, so what they said it's on your target for killing monsters. Yeah, it's definitely a monster. I mean, zero to six HP. Yeah, zero to I six HP. I don't. I don't understand the point in it. I don't. Unless there's like a boss that maybe would be really good to kill, like no, it's just so for low about, level like, accounts. Let you get drops without getting HP XP. Yeah. It's like yeah. a workaround. Oh, it's just for yeah. it's just for custom accounts that restricted accounts. Yeah, really, oh, okay. really restricted. Because accounts. they patched that bug. There used to be a bug that if you tagged a monster on the exact same tick that it spawned, that same tick, then you would not receive hit points XP or any XP at all, if I'm not mistaken, when you did the damage. So I don't remember if it was Kemp Q, somebody like that. Used a 10 HP account. I think it was K. Yeah, and he tagged gargoyles, and then they would die, and he had to do that to farm a granite ball without getting any XP for yeah, it. It was a very crazy. slow process, and I think this is to replace that because they fixed that. I think. I haven't okay. been keeping up with this that much because it doesn't apply to me. I, I mean, all my accounts. You know, I'm even going for 99 HP mm. on my pure. I think. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we're going to have to let the masters to... mess with this and see what they can do. Mm, yeah. th those guys that are going to come up with more creative shit than we will, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> There's going to be some really cool people that are more bored than us, well, you know? Basically. Yeah, yeah. The people are playing it in less conventional ways. I play it pretty straightforward. I like to PK sometimes and mostly play Iron Man. Yeah. I yeah, mean, that's, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just thinking, like, why wouldn't you just whip it to death? <laughs> but then you but gain yeah. HP, yeah. You yeah, I, I get it. I, I, missed the, I literally missed the part about the no XP gains. So right, so, so you don't get XP. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to be an incredibly niche item. It also takes three Cave Knight Shade to make. Which, uh... I mean, I think you can farm those, right? I mean, no, no, it takes... No, you gotta, like, manually... Yeah, oh, yeah. Scav, scav oh you gotta farm it yeah you can farm it but it's only one patch every like hour are they untradeable i don't think so i think you can buy cave nightshade i'm not sure, sure you can buy them floor. all bro you... sweep the floor well you actually i don't know if night i don't things, know if the belladonna is the same it might not be the same thing for I know some reason i thought it. that it, that produces it you plant a belladonna seed and you get cave nightshade i thought but I, now but i think it's I'm not tripping. right if it's not then you have to manually grab it every time which would suck probably, but it might be faster. Yeah, I remember Bonesaw used to make uh, use it to make like the super. Remember those videos? He was alking and looting. Yeah, he was alking and looting, them, making anti uh like it's like uh, super poison. That's what it was. Dude, I mean, those, good, those were good videos. Nice, yeah, was it? Oh yeah, you can yeah, farm some, nice, but it's dude. slow as fuck. It's still it's slow probably as fuck. super slow. It's probably and these are gonna be Iron Man accounts. I'm assuming these are gonna be probably 10 HP or streak with Iron Man accounts. So <laughs> yeah, have fun picking up all that nightshade or planting it, bro. And and look. I'm not going to lie to you, it almost feels kind of corny that your fire making level affects it, because we all know this is mostly for Iron Man, and every Iron Man except for me has got 99 fire making, so. Yeah, yeah 99 <laughs> fire making for six I mean, damage. dude, 10 HP, uh, Winter Todd is the freest thing ever, like, minus the time that you have to spend getting it, but, like, it's super easy to not die to it. That's what I'm saying, they pretty much built in, like, an automatic buff, you know, just by nature of who's going to be using it. Almost yeah, everybody I mean, literally, like, the 10 people that, fire. it's just the 10 people that plays 10 HP will love this, you know? Yeah. They get yeah. their own little so, update. 
<laughs> are there any other updates then that the, were happening? The big oh. one I really want to talk about is the rev cave drop yes. rate multiplier. Bro. Ooh, yo, um, yo, now, yo. someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the regular drop rate is going up by 50%, and then Thanks. the Slayer task, you get 5x drop rate on rev weapons. Is that Ooh. correct? I believe so, yes. I believe they're buffing at 50% from where it is now, and additionally, if you're on task, you get times 5. Don't you yeah. only get... Don't you only get like a like a really low amount of revenants as a task though? Isn't it like you get 100? like hundred? Can you get hundreds? Yeah, hundred. Being like eighty to hundred. Yeah, that's like, like, yeah, that's sizable over okay. a long period of time. Now you get more yeah. too if you want to extend it. Oh, so that would be two fifty. Uh, okay. If you extend is there already it, already an option for extending. Maybe I swear there is, but nah, you know, I felt like they so. said they were going to yeah, add an option it, for when extension. the update happens. But if they but extension is two fifty, so it'll go up to two fifty. So you got any uh, uh, revenant weapons on your Iron Man, Rice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have all. Of you them. got them all, bro. Yeah. Oh my god, bro! But that was before like <laughs> they spread the spread them out, you know. Right now, they grind, bro. Oh uh, no! I mean, they're gonna you release like the wildy new bosses, though. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that five X and fifty percent in general was even. I mean, they let people vote on it, but who's not gonna vote? Yeah, give me this shit so I can bounce out the wild. I mean, of course, people are gonna vote yes. For me, I don't mind them increasing the rate of weapons. And just FYI, I do have a big investment in rev weapons. I actually bought more because people were panic selling the scepters. So I went deeper. I don't care. There's <laughs> only a month. Updates come out in January. We're going to see what happens. I'll yeah, write it yeah. zero. Whether he loses it all or yeah. pulls his bank. January. January goal, dude. Dude. Yeah, you said yeah. it earlier. January. Damn. January will the updates so far, we think, are going to be released. We're going to December 10th. I think we'll get more info. Don't hold me on that. Um, God, I just had a, a brain blank. But yeah, I have a lot of these weapons, and I'm probably going to sell a lot of them during the update, but I was going to hold them, because they're supposed to be the strongest weapons in the wild, mm -hmm. and they're After getting the upgraded. Yeah. But now they're going to be so, like, I wouldn't say so common, but 5x, dude? Has anything ever updated to 5x? I mean, I think the Basilisk well, Jostle okay. one said on To be task, fair. I don't think it was, fair. I think it was like that on release, though, the Basilisk. Yeah, yeah, was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't updated. To, to be different. fair, though, I think the people... The amount of people that do Wilderness Slayer is a pretty niche market. But I may, I mean, more. after the update, maybe more people will do it. But I think it'll be still pretty niche. Because, like, most people, I'll they don't... Most yeah. people, you know, they just do Normal Slayer. They, they, they cannot be asked going to the Wilderness. It takes so much out of their mental just to be like, oh, Wilderness, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just so, saying these we'll are the see. strongest weapons we'll in the game. If you're going to make them a little more common, why not start 2x? What's the I got a confession rush? to make. I voted yes on the multiplier for Slayer, but I only I have to admit I put 20% more common. I wasn't really tripping about it. That was just my vote. 50% mm -hmm. seemed extreme to me, but also I haven't farmed these weapons yet. I've killed like 400 revs on my Iron Man. So I just was like, you know what? A little more common is probably not bad. I'll do 20 as a middle ground, and I voted yes on if Slayer task well, because I, I, I like that mechanic in general. Yeah, well, at, least for, you, at least for you. At least not for you, time, man. At least for you, man. Uh, yeah. There's going to be way more people... Ooh, getting for into sure, it, that is the so positive thing, right? Yeah, you're gonna be but slapping a lot more cheeks. So it's like just the start out at two x though, real quick. Let me just like yeah, yeah. two x and see what happens. Why are we rushing this shit, right? Why are we? Yeah, why do we gotta go away. all at once? Because yeah. then, hey, you know what? If two x ain't good, we'll go three x, bro. It's better. Why are we going right away, dude? It's like the biggest item in the game, which is about to get an upgrade, and they just do this. Yeah, so, so, yeah nice. I think part of their justification was oh, saying that it won't really be that they won't be that desirable without the upgrades anymore. I think that was their supposed balance to it. Like, yeah, they're going to be more common, but they're also going to be weaker or like less desirable as a standalone item uh, because they won't be good unless you get the upgrades to attach to them or whatever. I'm not sure how much of a, ba a balance that really could be considered to be. You yeah. know, uh, don't worry, the item's going to be worth less because it's going to be worth less. So it's okay if we make it really common because it's going to be nerfed anyways compared to how it could be. I don't really like that logic. Maybe I misunderstood it. Um, no, it's like I, I the missile it, whip being more, I, more, I less common, and then the tent being rare. It's like the whip is still pretty right. damn good, and yeah. you're grinding it, and you want it to be worth something, right? Yeah, bro. No yeah. cross right page. now. And is, the yeah, still items good. actually going to be on the wilderness slayer bosses too, I believe. I think they're they yeah. drop each yeah. of their respective. Oh weapons. yeah, I forgot. Yeah, oh, they, they will be dropping that stuff. Yeah. So, oh, like, shit. they're really trying to just get everyone a wildy weapon so they can go grind the new content. And it's like, I see your idea. Yeah, that's idea. what it is, I think. Yeah, I think oh, that's start slow. Is. Start slow, buddy. It's not I out yet. I think about yet. this, though. Demand for wilderness weapons might octuple 
when people decide that this is suddenly doable content, you know, well, yeah, so yeah. even if the, even if the inflow that, you know, it increases by five X, the amount of people wanting one might increase by 10 X. It still could potentially still, yeah. you know, go uh, up and well, I mean, the know, fact, be gambling well, on. There's Dude, all, there's I have a whole fact. thing in my yeah. head, but I think I, I'm going to reveal my theory after. So if I am <laughs> successful, yeah. it'll look good. And if I'm not, I won't lose other people money. So, yeah, but I yeah, do yeah. have like a, yeah. A 10 well, the, the thing is, the going. thing is, you have to be on Slayer tasks too, so you can't spam it true. for the five X. Yeah. So that that Dude, will slow it down quite true, a bit. True, true. But I, mean, I agree I've with you. I feel like yeah, I've got pretty much seventy Slayer on my first start account, and I've not had a single Revenant task. I never get them. Yeah. I've yeah, had exactly, three, and exactly. I have sixty-seven. So, I've had so three so far. I, yeah. I, I don't think I, I think considering how rare it is to get the task, and then it's like whatever. But they're obviously trying to make it so there's like easier accessibility to it. More people are going to have the weapons. The weapons might be cheaper, so people can like go and do the content. Because the worst thing that Jagex can do is release content and it's dead on release, right? Which I don't yeah. think is going to happen. But I think mm -hmm. the easier they make it for people to access that content, like you know, the better. I, I think it, it should be interesting. I think I'm probably going to do it on Fresh Start Worlds Mint. We should yeah, do yeah. it on Fresh Start Worlds. You already know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, that yeah. would be fun. That'll the first really upgrade. Really That'd be something we can do too, because there's like no wilderness content to do. So it's finally something we can actually get, get yeah. going. I personally I think that stuff like oh I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm afraid gonna... though, because Rakesy don't split well, dude. His <laughs> split <laughs> <are, laughs> shit. I still have a two thousand what was that silk you gave me, bro? Why do you even have two thousand silk on your name? Two thousand silk from you gave me something. I can't even remember. I couldn't sell that shit, bro. He's like, here's your split. <laughs> Bro. 2000 silk here's so, your what the dude he's gonna get like a new item bro and i'm gonna be like all right here's your split i'm gonna get like ass cheeks dude he's gonna have like no, he's a hundred k video you. on youtube bro, gonna gonna you a million Yo, your 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 reward is gonna be the the pleasure of pvm and with me <laughs> he makes me tell you why i watch this man bro I'll highly i will pay you with my <laughs> wisdom <laughs> I think personally, man, I feel like this is a direction that's going to be much better for the health and future of PvP in the wilderness than things mm -hmm. like Clue Scrolls and Dragon Pickaxe and all the other things where... Yeah. And, and I get it. I get it. PKers, okay. other than me, seem to like to say that all those options, they're all optional. Dragon so, Pickaxe is not optional in the game where you got to spend 900 hours mining to get 99, man. It's saving 13% speed with Crystal Pickaxe over Rune is not optional, man. And that, I think, led to why PKers and PVMers hate each other so much now is because... Pavlov's bells. Now, whenever I see a skull, I think this asshole is trying to fuck up all this <laughs> Pavlov's stuff. Pavlov's psychological <laughs> bell. <laughs> You're a fucking yeah, exactly. dog. You're in the bell. I think every <laughs> PVMer and Iron Man basically got Pavlov's bells, bro, because we're out here trying to get these serious account upgrades that we feel compelled that we have to get, and we're kind of baited into going out there against yeah. our will. You know, when, when you're going out there for things like Black Chins or Revenant Caves, great example, Rev Caves. That is truly optional content that has very, very high reward for it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Let, I think that that always should have been let, the way. Let me, let me talk about the theme of balancing and, and why I would say because of the balancing, it's probably not going to, like, uh, you know, just completely crash the items. So here, here's the deal, right? Na and the first natural barrier, right, to making it harder to farm is that is in the wilderness. That already, like, eliminates a lot of, accessibility for, for a lot of people right because it's like a mental hurdle a very high level mental hurdle that a lot of people just cannot do right a lot of people will never go no matter what they right. put in there so that's right. the, so that's the first weak blooded yeah. and then the second yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then there's another layer right it's that it's a slayer task so you yeah. can't get these crazy benefits unless you're on a slayer task and it takes a lot of time to get a task so that's two yeah. pretty high level barriers to making those you know crazy multipliers not as crazy as you might think because right? then you'd have to go through all that effort anyways to do mm -hmm. that to get to that point right and also the the bosses are worldy bosses and it's multi right so so that that also makes it a lot harder for like like so here's the difference right between like race three right race three you just do a quest and then you get it right and then you don't have to go to whether you can go in by yourself no one's gonna fuck with you no one's gonna hit you in the ass from the back you can do the bosses at your own time your own pace Wilderness, yeah. different story. You go to the wildy boss, you're probably gonna get you know piled by Minty's crew with Dark Bros. You're dead. You're like, I'm never doing this shit again. Literally day one, all these people <laughs> trying to go in, they get piled. They're like, oh fuck, I'm out, I'm out. You know, fuck the wilderness, no, folding no again. You know, things like that, right? They're not, they're just, <laughs> you know, it's like it's just the accessibility is really hard because it's so violent. You know, it's like too extreme for yeah. 
for the average mobile Andy or, or RuneScape Redditor. You know, they're just they're just gonna back out real fast. So the filter is already there. So I think naturally these items will probably, you know, re remain very steady. It'll, you know, the the theme of the what was I saying earlier? Yeah, just the fact that balance. Yeah, it, it just has natural balancing, right? It's just it's a lot easier to balance these things just because there's all these natural barriers that makes it really hard to farm for for the average player. So which I think is it's nice. Be yeah, it's nice. Wilderness after this comes out, yeah. I think it's gonna be popping. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, to it. you'll bring. You I know, just make a lot of good points. Yeah, dude, new people like... will come in. But it's but but like a lot of them will back out, right? You'll you will get new mm -hmm. more people coming in, but but it's not gonna crash the items to that point because a lot of them will not be able to stay. They'll try and then they'll back out just because you know they don't like getting. We don't even need new people. It's just so, like the old people will come back. And yeah, shit, yeah, right? yeah. Some old people will definitely come back. The ones that are more I think seasoned. All old people. Yeah, like sure. the the like like well, I mean like come back and stay, right? Like the more seasoned people will come back and actually you know try to stay, whereas a lot of the new people that are like getting in. They'll hype up the numbers, you know, for for participation for like the first week, but a lot of those guys will back out because like after they get PK once or twice, they're just so over it, you know. Over it. Yeah, they they'll be so yeah. over it basically. Depending if they make a shit ton of money though, like I said, yeah. it's a lot less of a sting when you're bringing home five mil an hour and you lose five hundred k. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I just yeah, it's like, is it fifty percent without a stereotype? Yeah, which I think is... it's buffing about fifty percent over where it currently stands. So, so what is the does current, that mean? What is spice is like, common? Is that what that means? So what is like yeah. the current rates right now? Like, is it easy to Rare. make two mil an hour, three mil an hour, or something? Or what do you think? Two Rare? mil an hour at Rift Games? I'll assume so. Is it easy? I'm nervous. Well, he got lucky oh, though. His his crazy. race was when he got actual big drops though. What is it like normally? You know. Well, like, regular GP at the Rift Games. Yeah. Yeah. What is it like? Almost every kill I get is three hundred to four hundred k. If they just got there and got a few kills. And that's with the 100k to be fair. So more like 150 to 200k if they've done like. They four should kills. definitely up to like 100k to 200k then if they're gonna buff this shit too. Like that'd be funny. Yeah, yeah the, the loot's all around gonna be better apparently. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. when I if it's... it was like insanely good money. But it was it, like it, yeah. I think it was like four or five mil per hour or something like that. If with you're using your a big drop, drop, right? With your big um, drop. That was that was including all of the drops and all of the statues based over like a long period of time. Well, like, what about example, what about without like the big weapons? Because like I think the weapons you probably wouldn't get it even in ten hours. It's still probably decent. Not. It's still a few few mil per hour. It's okay. more than two mil per hour. Oh, okay, let's easily. let's say let's say it's three mil an hour, and then for for like the That's high level thing. players, right? For high level players with the with the actual weapons, and we're talking like up to yeah four or five mil an hour probably. You know, fifty percent boost. Even if it was three mil before, that's still four, four, four mil. You know now, right after the. Other I got day. a question. I've yeah. never thought about this before. I know the ammo of Avarice makes like noted drops and all that crap when you're killing revs, right? Obviously, I don't have one of my Iron Man. Um, is that specific to the amulet, or do you just need a skull? No amulet. You did doesn't yeah, have amulet to be skulls you. Amulet yeah, skulls. yeah, I know. I know that it automatically skulls you. But if I have a skull and a salve on, am I getting the same effect as I would hypothetically with an Avarice? No, you need Avarice for the notes. I mean, Damn, you wouldn't want man. to stay that oh. long. But, but You're going up. 700k actually yeah. got some. Yeah. Bro, so, oh, you'd, be, uh, you'd be crazy. Well, I was talking about for my Iron Man. Yeah, no, oh, but like for an Iron Man, though, you're never staying that long, dude. All you need is a looting bag, dude. There's no, yeah, there's there's no way you're staying that shit. long. You're crazy. Stay long, bro. I mean, last time, I'm not going to lie. Last time I brought my SGS with me, just in case. Not even, I don't have an AGS. I <laughs> just brought my SGS. Yeah. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to hit this son of a bitch. I'm going to make him put some prayer on and eat. Yeah, I mean, it's usually better that way. You escape better that way, you know? But, like, for yeah. me, dude, like, you're making a lot of good points. Like, a Slayer task, kind of rare. I got three yeah, and 67 is. Slayer. That's that still makes a lot. That still takes a while. 67. Yeah, you went yeah. all the way to 67 just Wilderness? Yeah. Is and it profitable at low Slayer three, levels? And only three tasks. If you get good luck on Larian's keys, you don't die. <laughs> yeah, see, it's like hard. There's some Dude, hard the, like barriers. Wilderness man. Slayer, Wilderness Slayer is actually huge. Like, I I didn't realize how good it was until Fresh Start Worlds because it's the first time properly doing it since they updated it. The last time I did it, you got emblems like the bounty hunter one. I right. it. But it's really good. So uh, the Slayer Cave in the Wilderness, I I kind of slept on it to be honest with you. Uh, but it's fucking insanely good. Like the I amount think... of like stuff you get oh, there yeah. is really decent. You've been making videos on it, haven't you? Didn't you just get yeah, like yeah. trooper parts from something not too long ago, bro? You must be the reason yeah, yeah. the caves are popping lately. I've been finding people in the caves left and right for me to PK. Oh right. my god, I forgot to mention it, man. I forgot to tell everybody about that the other night when I was hanging out of your Twitch stream. I'm uh, sorry, guys. The best thing ever happened when I was in mint stream the other day. I was PK in the Wilderness Slayer Cave, right? Mm -hmm. Thanks, sh shout out to Rakesy because I'm pretty sure your video is why I randomly see activity there now. Okay, this dude was like, why, right? He types why when I was chasing him down and killing him. He had like 300K worth of broad bolts. He had like several thousand broad bolts on him. 
20, 30 minutes later, I go to Edgeville Bank and I see the guy and he was walking away. He left and everybody at the bank was telling him, don't quit, bro. Stop trying to give your stuff away. And I said, did that guy, what, what, what did that guy say? What happened? And he said, the guy said PKers ruined the game and he's quitting RuneScape, right? <laughs> I'm laughing. It's all good. It's all funny. I'm like, come on. I tried to hop a little bit and I was going to go find him and be like, come on, dude. It's the wilderness, bro. Like, don't go in there if you don't want to get killed, man. But I'm not a dick. It's not personal to you. Anyways, I didn't find him. I'm sitting here scrolling and bursting. I open up the 2007 Scape subreddit because I like the browser. I admit it. And what do I see right there at the top, man? It said, P -P PKers ruined this game. I was just in the Wilderness Slayer Caves and got PK'd when I was minding my business. I was like, this is the best day of my life, bro. So I put a Gazzo and I took the screenshot of his PvP death. You know where it said his name? I was like, this is you, bro. This is you right here. <laughs> this is you right here. Appreciate the broad bolts, man. Hey, don't go in the wilderness if you I was like, this is the best day of my life. All right, sorry about that. How many upvotes did you get? How many upvotes? How many upvotes? Did you get the ratio? <laughs> oh, oh, big time. He had zero upvotes on the post, and I got up to like 50, and everybody's like, is this real? This is amazing. And I was like, it's real, bro. There's no way. He said exactly the same thing. P PKers ruined the game for PBMers, oh, and I'm quitting. Yeah. Like, it was Damn. word for word. Bro, you ratioed 100%. him two times. One Look, we ratioed him on in the Reddit. game, then on Reddit. Oh, my bro. God. You so thank you, Rexy. You yeah, literally because I think your video guy. brought him out there. Oh yeah, that, he God. uninstalled Rune Light for what sure. What if he's your he, neighbor? At first, he probably wasn't gonna Dude, what if he's like your neighbor, bro? And then you're like, yo, remember I killed you, you know? Like, damn, it'll be like over. God. You spray paint my Did he write a letter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there, there, there goes another the player, you know? There goes another no, player. Go to the rev cave, <laughs> cave drops again, though. It's just... I, I think you got a true parchment, Rakesy, that I saw. He did. My bad, my bad. Yeah, he did. That was nice. He did. I got it, so, so here's Damn. the thing. The thing that's good about the Slayer Cave uh, in the Wildy is that it basically resupplies you with everything you need because you get like a surplus of uh, bright uh, restore potions, anglerfish, mana rays, etc. Uh, and then you just get like alka balls and goodies on top of that. And you can, you know, you can just sit in there. I'm pretty sure you can barrage some of the tasks. Mm -hmm. You can definitely cannon some of the tasks. Mm -hmm. If you wanted, you can do both. You can cannon and barrage at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's what people yeah, do. He's mm -hmm. really good. And it like self supplies you, you know. It, it's really decent. I I would I would highly advise it even on the main game because you can just out the items if you're an Iron Man, and it gives you some GP or whatever, you know. And everything on Justine's Last Man Standing shop is on the Wilderness Slayer drop table in the cave, right? That's why you got yeah. a trooper parchment, right? I, I'm pretty sure. I don't know about the room pouch though. No, I don't know about the room pouch. Oh, okay, right. Uh, what about ornate mall handles? I don't feel like I've ever yeah. seen one of those. It is yeah. on the table. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. Else, Wait, does that give you a collection log been... slot? <laughs> Do those give you collection good log question. slots? Good question. Oh, that's a good question. The, that damn, I need to know that. And when that shows up? That's no, a, you know what? I don't think so. I think I just got something recently from the wilderness. Like, I bought something oh, from yeah, last week. I think you have to buy it from the shop. I think it has to be bought. Or, I mean, I got. I can't remember what it was. Something recently did not show up in my collection log, and I was like, damn, I really was hoping that that was going to count, and it didn't. I can't remember now, though. Yeah. It was wilderness related. It. Yeah, you got to buy it then. That rip. You right. gotta get the cape anyways if you want to finish that log. Oh well, no, fuck <laughs> finishing that log. <laughs> I'm not doing I, it. Dude, I, I, I could do it. I, I, I don't you know do it all the time. You do LMS all the time. Yeah. I haven't done it in ages, but since they added the uh, the one defense and Zerk Eruption, it like, gives a nice bit of variety. I like one dude. defense so much better. Yeah, it's fun, dude. It's just so much more fast-paced. Yeah, it's more fast and it's just something... It's also about like having a different build. You have to play slightly different. And uh, mm. yeah, I've not played it in I just did it for the first time in months, like a few days ago, and I was so much better than I was before I started messing around on my one defense pier. I've clearly improved a lot. Like I actually was consistently making it to the last four or five people. Mm, and I was very good. happy with that. Nice. For me, that's big, you know, considering I was like having trouble killing the bots a few months ago. I was like, fuck this, I'm never coming back. I just got a few points for looting bags, you know. That way if I ever need a looting bag and trying to grab one. It's a really good way to warm up as well. I mean, whenever I go PKing, I usually go to LMS just before, just to make sure that I'm not just terrible. You know, I'm about to go to the game. Unpopular, man. Got me up. unpopular opinion about LMS, dude. I like it. I just don't enjoy that safe PvP. Me neither. I don't. Me neither, buddy. People do not get it when I tell them that. If there's no risk, I don't have fun. It's just aggravating. If I'm not actually gonna lose something, I don't. I don't get it. I'm with you. Is that what you mean? Like it's not fun to me because there's nothing to lose. There's that, but also there's wilderness items that could have just been from the wilderness. Instead, they're like, okay, do LMS. It's free. It's you know skill based, obviously, and you could just get these items in. If they would have just not had a shop and have everything from the wilderness, just a Slayer Cave, those rune pouches, they could add a wilderness rune crafting thing, and you just it, there's so many things they could have done wilderness content wise. Instead, they gave it all to a free, no risk, no risk shop. Yeah, time sink. 
Broken for irons, good. too, apparently. Yeah, and it's botted, bro. Like, botted to death. Botted to death. So all these items are just getting flooded in the game from the wilderness that, that you know, devalues wilderness slayer, if you think about it. So I, I don't know if I'm going to do wilderness slayer or go PK, but y'all giving me the itch right now, yeah, man. You need to get out there in the wilderness. I, I, guess, right. I guess it's cool to have, like, a place where people can learn PvP in a more I like safe it. manner. I, just, I agree. I think it, it helps. I think it is still important to have it. Um, yeah, but, like, you know, of course, there. I think there are definitely putting in much more effort in, like, trying to make the wilderness more active and stuff. Like, you know, you'll, we'll see soon how, how that goes. You know, how their next uh, big stunt goes. But what what's the just, deal with the revs, right. though? Are they also adding multi, multi? Like, are they expanding the revs? So, in the, in the game jam, they said that there's going to be a bridge of fate, and that bridge of fate will go into an area of the wilderness that does not require combat. So, everyone and anyone gets murdered there, right? No scouts. No combat there. level right. restrictions. Ooh, Wide open. Yeah. Okay. There's going to be a little PK town, a couple of random bosses. If any of this comes in the game, and they're going to have multi revs there, too. And that's oh, okay. So, it's not official. Action. The multi rev stuff is not official. None of this is. No. Nah. And the honestly, in fate. my opinion, that's where they should have increased the rev loot because it makes so much more sense. Have the increased rev loot in the more dangerous cave. See how that uh, plays out, and then if you got to increase it over over time. I, I, I think the problem with that, like the first They'll thing, split the mind, player base it, quite a bit. It, it's just gonna go back to the getting camped down and people paying for protection, right? Like it awesome. just makes sense. Well, it, going in the game in general is gonna do that. Well, so so yeah, no. Here's what I was be, thinking. It would be better controlled in the single cave. That I would say it would be in the multi. Yeah, no. I mean, but like, it's still gonna happen both. Yeah, yeah no. I mean, like, I, I mean, like, here's the deal. The the locking down thing only worked effectively because that was the only place to kill revs, right? There's also a couple more reasons. Um, yeah, that's they like didn't the have movie. a death tax, right? Yeah. So in it. my mind, if they bring the death tax to the multi cave, right, and they make it two to three hundred k. And then you have a limit on when you can go back in. Then people couldn't spam rush the cave and protect yeah. accounts because these are protect accounts in Discord would log in in rags and they wouldn't lose anything if they died and they just over over pounce. And there was actually clans that would come in, bait these people out, and wipe them. They wouldn't make much, but now if loot keys, little loot key wiped two three hundred k, those clans are not going to be making as much profit as you think. They're going to oh, be counting. yeah. Also, yeah. Also, just way less people will care because, like, you know, now you just have you you have you've always going to have the single revs. Now you don't need to rely on those people anyway. So their customer base is going to be a lot smaller. No, but I mean, like, I mean, like more so. Like, I I was hoping they they maybe just add some multi revs in the in the new in the original cave because you know how it is when you you know you know how like right now or even after the update, it's I don't think there's going to be like so many more people PK and stuff that like. You know that it's enough to spread you out. You underestimate right? how little content there is in the wild, and now there's going to be way more than anyone ever expected. Yeah. Like the only reason people are not in the wilderness is because there's literally jack shit to do. Yeah. yeah I do you yeah. think there's no, one I, more factor I think, that uh, will help it might be deter. easier if they didn't split it up like that. You know. So maybe the bridge of fate stuff. I, I felt like maybe the multi revs didn't need to be a part of that like brain jam stuff, right? It could just be added. Like I've, added. I've seen a lot of people that are upset about it being a multi and stuff and talk about the locking down and things. And I think that there's a very important factor that will help deter locking down. And that is going to be new um, group loot mechanics, similar to like Nex or Nightmare. Um, I think that now there will be incentive for, for example, if an Iron Man wants to go out yeah, to the wilderness, yeah. well, he can grab all of his Iron Man friends and they can all go kill it, you know, together. It's going to be a lot more easy to, more incentive because back in the day, no Iron Man in history would have ever done that before. You can't. You know what I'm saying? Couldn't. Yeah, like, you can't. There's no one reason. You shoot one damage and you don't get the drop. Exactly. So, it was a so way, that's it what was I'm saying is that with, time. with group loot mechanics, I think it's really going to promote grabbing your homies and going to try to find a world, yeah. which will really start some wars and not let people hold it down the same because there's incentive even for Iron Man to get out there and fight. You know, I think the well, group yeah, loot I mechanics just don't, are very I just, important. I just for, don't think it would apply to revs, though, because they're just not, like mobs, right? But, like, yeah, for the new bosses, yes, yeah, so it'll, it'll work fine because, you know, we've done, done that many times already, so it'll be fine. You got a good point because there's not really much that an Iron Man needs particularly from Revenants, you know what I mean? So that, yeah, that might also, not necessarily be a good yeah, example for you to say yeah. Irons. Yeah, yeah, but, like, for the bosses, though, it, it works But fine. even for, like, That's casual main is. accounts, you know, yeah. since there's group loot mechanics or whatever, there will probably be worlds popping up where it's kind of, like, free-for-all, we're not fighting each other worlds, you know what I'm saying? Like, free-for-all, let's all get here, and if the PKers pop up, we go to town. I think it's yeah. going to be a very interesting mechanic so, because so, of the group loot. So, I meant more like the the new Rev boss, uh, I mean, the new Weldy bosses, right? The You know, the bear and the Reworks. spider. Yeah, like, that. that is going to have shared drops, splits, right? So, it's going to work the same Apparently. as next and stuff. So, like, everybody can do kill it, 
and you know whoever does the most damage has the highest chance of getting the drop basically yeah, yeah it'll work fine in that in that regard yeah like it's you also raised a good point because i was thinking oh think about how many iron men are going to want to because i mean now at the end of the day i guess now that i think about it it still probably will be a fairly reasonable way for iron men to get a lot of good alcohols while they go for dragon pickaxe you know i wouldn't be surprised if discords or clans pop up of iron men that want to go kill the new revenants you know in the the group loot scenario but that's honestly the only thing that i can think of that might not allow this content to be locked down constantly is group loot i think that that one mechanic alone is going to really incentivize people to work together against pkers or against clans yeah um which in turn in my opinion some some little fucking uh dds danny out there is going to turn around and spec somebody to sleep and come up 100 mil and all of a sudden get that bug and want to go pking you know and conversely um People are going to win these wilderness fights, get a taste for PvP, see as maybe it's not as scary. I'll tell you this, after two weeks of me running around shaking like a leaf in the wilderness, I don't give a fuck about the wilderness anymore, bro. It's not scary like I thought it was. It's so dead almost everywhere. You yeah. only really even got to pay attention like in the rev caves. I can't even find anybody anywhere else, you know? And I think that that will largely become the case, you know? Yeah, I think I a mean, lot of people and, and will... Men already said like the whole entry fee will definitely like prevent True, that's a down. filter. Yeah, that, if they that had it so, before, yeah. they would not have been able to do this at such an extent because yeah. they were getting wiped left and right, but because they could just come back and rag gear with numbers and they had such a crazy... Like, the way they were getting paid on spreadsheets was so... It was like mob-esque, like, you know? It was like criminal, <laughs> criminal shit, bro. It's impressive, too. But obviously, yeah. the payroll was so big that they would just outnumber them. This would not be the case because they did not have the skill to actually protect that cave. They get wiped once, they're down a bunch of money. Plans making bank. Not worth it to have. go fight again. Yeah, 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 yeah. they incentive to wipe them, too. I mean, why wouldn't you want to wipe these people as much as you can? Farm them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, not, not the refs, farm them. <laughs> yeah, so the protectors would probably get farmed if they implemented some of these updates. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think That'll they've learned a lot. I think it's taken a while for them to learn some of these like measures, but I think it's gonna come in handy, you know, for I agree. balancing yep. for sure. I so, agree. I was locked up when the wilderness rework happened, you know, and so I came out to like dragon pickaxes in the wilderness, which just was wild to me even before I had an Iron Man. I just remember asking like why, and they said because it's good loot for, you know, wilderness <laughs> bosses, and I was like, so they literally just did it like just to buff the profit of the wilderness bosses like that's literally it their counterparts come from safe mini games and medium level monsters and then this is you know something that i thought was just ignorant so i agree at some point in history here they really missed the mark they really yeah, dropped they the ball they and it made pvp much worse and i yeah. was when i started pk not too terribly long ago it started off with me doing binge derox on my main for some fun smoked a little bit was like hey let's fuck around i had fun so i started hey man i don't really mind pvp this is kind of enjoyable and I finally, and I think this is something that a lot of Iron Men and PV, PVMers will struggle with. I don't take it personally, bro. You're in the wilderness. Nobody's out to get you because you're you doing your thing. It's just, I am i cannot tell you how lighthearted I am when I'm PKing people, bro. I'm not out to fuck you over. I'm not trying to ruin your day. I'm having fun and rolling the dice, bro. That's legit it. I'm rolling my digital dice roll and seeing if I die or whatever. There's no harm or ill intention behind it. I'm not trying to fuck your day up, man, you know? And, and that's how... I used to get so mad when sons of bitches attacked me in the wilderness because I just was like, man, I'm just trying to get my pickaxe from you. And then the Jagex made me. Because I was applying their meaning. I was thinking about it like, oh, man, he thinks he got yeah. me and he's blah, 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 blah. And it wasn't even like that, bro. Just running around having a good time. You know, like, like guys, watch Rexy and Min Mad Cow's PK content. Tell me they're not laughing 90% of the time. Man, I've seen you guys flub something and just go, oh, fuck. Uh, well, you know, it happens. It's sometimes you misclick. Sometimes it's just fun, man. It's just a different way to enjoy the game. It's still the game we all know and love. And I'm still a 2.2k yeah, total yeah, Iron Man. I, man. I mean, you know, once the D pick stuff comes in, it'll definitely shift the mood. You know. Yeah, of, I think that the they players. set it up. The, the tension kinda... will, will definitely die down a lot more. You know, because like, it's weird that that was even a thing though. Like, how yeah. easy is it to grind a safe spotable box with minimal yeah. risk over? A, a couple of weeks i mean shit mm -hmm. bro yeah they made it sound like they were climbing uphill with their bank on them yeah uh, dude. It, it just goes <laughs> to show how i don't want to use the word entitled because it it's, makes people sound no, you it, can, just, it, it, it just goes to show just tough. how yeah. how conditioned people are to expect things to be safe right right that's sure. just how it is and and there's nothing we can do about that unfortunately you know what i mean that the safe deaths are are not going to be able to go away you know we can't fix it so but but what they can do is of course learn from their mistakes and ease the tension, right? D pick out out there, right? Things like crossbows, whatever. Like people aren't gonna like sweat over something like that. Iron Man's barely even use those items even if they get it. I can attest sure. to that, right? So it's like one of those things where much better because the profitability will be there and it's and, and it's good 
for the PKers and the PVMers, right? But like, it's not gonna pit people like against Iron each Man. other. Yeah, against yes. each other as much. So it's make good. them take it personally. It's much better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because like the people like Ironmans that go for crossbows, they know what they sign up for. But like something like Deepik was like, dude, this is literally a daily tool. I can't. I have to go. Right. So, it's a so, very yeah, exactly. important item. Yeah, so you you move that somewhere else as an option. Boom, there you go. That's the the much better piece. Or like, you know what I mean? Much much better. There's one dynamic, less sure. major reason for the yeah. two parties to hate each other. Yeah, I think you that's like saying? probably the bulk of the reason. It's probably just the D pick. I'm not going. Like, that's probably I agree. Yeah. The bulk of the reason. That, that's the atmosphere that I felt like I came back to. I don't think that Jagex did anything in particular to kill PvP. I think a lot of the community. I think we've gotten older. A lot of people enjoy the game in different ways now. You know what I'm saying? I don't think yeah. that's inherently Jagex's fault. But one thing that they really did do that fucked it up, other than Bounty Hunter, we don't got to talk about that because I just recently watched a video on Bounty Hunter and that looks so much fun, bro. Yeah. But um, and I never did it. Um, damn, I forgot what I was saying now because I started thinking about that damn Bounty Hunter. But um, yeah, yeah, the dynamic when you came back into it because and you saw D picks being the on dynamic. There. Yeah, man, it was very much, very much bait and switch, like like a uh, cat and mouse. That's not fun, man. That's not conducive to PvP. It makes people hate it. It makes you feel like when you feel like you have to go in the wilderness. When I go to kill the revs, man, that's different. No damn good and well. What I'm doing is just me being greedy and selfish. This isn't some item that's gonna help my account in any real way. I want some quick GP. That's where you're supposed. To, that's how it's supposed to work, in my opinion. It's the man. heart of the wild, right there. Uh, greed. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not some item not that I'm like gonna it. feel like my account. I don't need yeah. an item that my account feels fucked up lockables. without it. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I, I think there is some part to be blamed uh, on Jagex there. Like it is random just to put the dragon pickaxe there, and, and like. I've not really seen that much kickback. People being annoyed at the fact it's being removed, and that's understandable. Not... Because it's it's the source of like bullshit, you know, that that people have to deal with and and drama. I think PKers have largely become largely become aware of that as well. Yeah. But part of the reason that so many irons and PVMers will never try it is because they got forced into bad situations. They felt like. Yeah. And and they had that bad mindset that I was talking about, like it was something personal and not just some dude. Yeah, just I think fun. revs is is definitely a much better thing, yeah, because it doesn't. That's have how that I want the wilderness to work. Black Chan with... Choppas, oh yeah, man, Black Chance, that's great, great XP, great money, and you risk and reward, you know. But it's totally optional. You yeah, can do exactly. armor yeah, with red yeah, chin. Yeah, you yeah. can do armor deal with I think red chin. No problem. Like definitely a special case where it really did boil people, you know, get, get them yeah. really riled up. But yeah, no, I mean, for just, sure. I think it, the, scrolls are fine in the wilderness. Yeah, a lot of people yeah, say that they think they that hard lot. steps shouldn't go in the wild. I think hard steps. I mean, steps it's always been like that, though. You know, so yeah. I, I don't think people complain since that's always been how it is. Traditional, you're treasure seeking, bro. You know, fuck it. Yeah, man. hard. Like, yeah, I think hard enough should have wilderness steps. Yeah, I think dude, that's fine. There, it's just like you know, in this day and age, the old, the way that we used to treat wilderness doesn't work, and it took them a while to really figure out what elements, what are the rules, right, to make it work. Mm -hmm. It's it was a miss. It was misses like left and right for a while. But I think I think right now I think us we've kind of pointed all the variables out what it takes, right? Yeah. And and yeah, I think they understand. So hopefully, uh, next update, right? We'll see that being translated right into results that that we're looking for. We're all looking for here. So oh, I'm 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 really looking forward to this the the boss expansion rework thing that they've done. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Oh, it, I'm gonna add this in as the last point. So when we had Mod Gobbling on the podcast, we actually spoke about it. And uh, originally the idea was they were just going to like redo the environment, put them inside the cave. Uh, I think that Vetion was the only boss that was getting a rework to bring him to 2022 standards. But interestingly enough, um, they've actually said that they're going to revamp all of the models. So They did? Did you see it? Yeah, yeah I've seen it. it I saw it. I've been in Addis. Yeah, it looks, it looks really cool. very nice. I I think it looks a lot more like suited to the environment. Like, I, I don't know if you guys remember the original pictures of. It just looks uh, like a normal spider. <laughs> yeah, it just yeah. It, like the original. The original oh, one looked like a normal spider, just color different. Yeah. This new one though, it's like prickly. It's got kind of, yeah, it's got hairs on it and shit. Yeah, it's like thorns cool. and shit. I'm like, holy I shit! Feel like they just they match their environment a lot yeah, better. And also, better. It's like, if you're gonna revamp something, it's like just go the extra mile. Do you know what I mean? It's like like yeah, give them exactly. a. They all, they all needed a little one anyways, do you know what I mean? So Oh, I think they're doing Callisto next. I haven't seen that yet. Right? Oh, they've already yeah, I think got... I saw Callisto. I think oh, I saw yeah? Callisto. All right, let me look at that. A little more high quick. death. Let me look at that real quick. A little yeah. more texture on the fur, a little more high death and shaded. Yeah, what's no, the can, uh, mod? You can go to my Twitter. Actually, I'll link it to you right now, Ray. Here you go. Look yeah. in the Discord. There it is. That's the tweet that I put out. You can Are see you, the difference. You guys are going to be frozen for a little bit here. Dude, the difference <laughs> is like night and day. It looks so freaking good for the environment. Like, 
I don't know if you. I wish oh. we had a side by side like the old Callisto in this environment because there was a picture of it. The difference is huge. Damn! Atmosphere. Look at Callisto's head, bro. He's fucking yeah. gigantic, like, actually, dude. He it chew actually you up. looks good. Yeah, He's a summoning bear up. recolored. They said that uh, the wiki says they already had the asset from summoning, and it's just a bear from summoning, and they took a spot off its back and made it Callisto. <laughs> oh yeah, Beautiful. that was the original. Yeah, that was the original Callisto. But this is yeah, a right, new yeah. model. This is a new model. Yeah, you yeah, can tell this guy's like a bit leaner, but his head is gigantic. He'll bite you. You know, he'll like he'll he'll gobble like you. Like a real bear. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's cool. I'm excited for it, dude. I really am. I'm I'm thinking it's gonna be really good for the PvP in the game, yeah. which is something yeah. that I never once thought I would give much of a shit about, man. But having immersed yeah. myself in it, yeah. and I would also like to urge everybody. I mean, yo, bro, I'm telling like, you, seriously, give it a shot. It's more fun dude, than you it's think. Just, right? It's just so nice to know that like. Literally, some dude could hit a one in it, but it doesn't fucking matter. I'll still get the drop, you know? Like, yep. uh, unlike before. <laughs> Rise is so. Yeah, it's an. Like, Rise, you got like, loot keys, dude? Because, like, it incentivizes yo, the whole game to take part. Yeah, not just yeah, PKers, yeah, yeah. not just PVMers, not Iron Man. Everybody gets to come out here and get their titties and their cheeks slapped and yeah, clapped. Exactly, you know what I'm like, saying? Everything. Yeah, yeah. No, it's much <laughs> it's better. Hurt. God, like, it's like simple things that needed needed to be changed for so long, finally, you know? It's happening. Yeah, yeah. man. Gosh. I've got big faith in Jagex. I think that the polling system change and everything, man, I personally think that's a very good idea. Yeah. I, I think it's going to take the handcuffs off them a lot and really let some content get pumped out, you know? Yep, 2023. Well, I, I, I think for PvP, that was needed, for sure. For PvP, that was yeah. much needed. I, yeah. I, I, I actually think, think, I think this update's going to be huge because it, it's like the first big PvP update we've had like in the wilderness for a long time that's passed a fucking poll. Like, Mm -hmm. There's actually a lot running on this, so I really hope uh, I'm like not sure. I'm confident that they're yeah. taking this seriously. Like they have to, because if if they do a bad job of this, it, it's like you know they need to set the bar with this update, and hopefully people enjoy the content that comes out. But look, boys, I think we've been going for a good old <laughs> amount of time right now. Wow. So for anybody who's watched uh, the podcast this far. You crazy bastards. I feel bad for the person that timestamps the bloody podcast, dude. I think he watches it on like two times, by the way, because he's just like, he's going to be here for like so long. We need a word. We'll have him on the podcast, dude. <laughs> and then we... he, can, then he can tag his own podcast. He'll be we saying need... as little as possible to make it short. Wait, how do you we need that? a word, boys. We need a word for the boys to comment down below. They like to have something to type down in the comments to signify that they're real ones. What do we think the word's gonna be for today, boys? What's the secret word? Mintus. Yo, Josh can you know the guess? Josh, so. Josh, you got a random word you can pick out of the air? <laughs> Recidivism. Whoa, that's something easy to type, maybe. You know? Good luck on spelling, hey, everybody. Mate, Mint is just typed in the Discord saying that you can't hear. Let me know when it's ended. Can you actually not hear us? Oh my god, he's trolling. Really? Is he trolling? All right, well then we have to. No, we have to make, dude, we have to make it about mint then. What? What? Let, right, well, let's rip on mint. What, what's a good? Oh, mute mint? it. Mute it. I don't know. <laughs> is is he still muted? All right. Uh, comment. Mint mad cow gets smited for claws every day. Yeah, mint <laughs> mad cow smited for claws <laughs> or something like That's that. Mint mad cow Anything smited. like that. Anything like that. Yeah, something. So something about him getting smited and failing at PvP. That's all we need to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just basically, if you want to leave a word, just type "mint sucks." Boom. Yeah, that, anything negative about minty will work. Yeah, any any anything like that, we love it. Right. Anyways, Josh, it's been a pleasure, yeah. mate. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming on for the second time. Absolutely. Uh, we'll have you on again down the line if you fancy coming back. It's always a pleasure. Uh, where can the people find you, dude? What were your social medias? Uh, my Twitch is Jay Palalt. I know that uh, that's kind of random. I probably said this last time, but I never knew I was going to be a Twitch streamer, so I just kind of made it my name. Um, and my I got two YouTube channels. My main one is just my name, Josh Palalt, and then I'm the one that I'm about to focus on here soon is the RS Felon. So make sure you give that a shot. Check out my new Guthix lore video. I worked very hard on it. And if you got anybody that's interested in RuneScape, wants to try out RuneScape, I made a video a few months ago called "What Is Old School RuneScape and Is It Worth Getting Into in 2022." Uh, that I put a lot of time and effort into. So that's where you'll find me five days a week on Twitch and over on YouTube, man. So, yeah, well, all right, link dude. in the description. Boys, all right, so the description. see you guys.